All right, I'd like to call the Finance Committee to order. Um, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for, for joining. Um, goal for tonight, this is the, uh, we're going to make this be the final evening of budget review. Um, three, three weeks here now, they're going through the schools and most of the town departments last week. Uh, tonight, the objective is to, um, any any remaining questions that we might have for the uh, the school committee, uh, I see representatives here, also the, the town department heads, several here as well. Um, we can ask those tonight. Um, we've got a couple of representatives from RCTV here, so that is pertaining to Article 10, the, uh, the new revolving fund for cable access. So I think we'll spend some time up front on that uh, so they can uh, they can uh, uh, chime in as they need to. That way they don't have to stay here for two, three, four, five, six hours, however late we go. We might push up through till dawn, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then um, what else? We've got the enterprise funds to look at. Uh, there might be some discussion on, on capital tonight. And then uh, by the end of the evening, we the goal is for us to, uh, to do our voting on um, uh, the budget line items and all the finance related articles for town meeting coming up. So that's the plan for tonight. Anyone else in the room? Is there any other topics that you would like to see discussed this evening that I didn't mention at a, at a high level? Any public comment at all? Will there be possibility to ask questions as you go through things? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Um, why don't we start with the RCTV just again while they're here, right? So that what we're talking about now is, is Article 10. Bob, I might ask you just to recap that one one more time. I know we ran through them. It was it was after I had to leave last week. Um, but maybe just, just to recap that one more time and then see if the committee has any questions or anything that the, the RCTV <coughs> representatives would like to add. I think. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Eric. I also want to add that um, town council sent back a lot of comments today on the warrant report, not the warrant that's closed. Um, I looked through it. I don't think there's anything to change any of your opinions. He doesn't always like the words I use. He used different ones. Um, a lot of it's legalese. Um, he did spend a fair amount of time on Article 10. Um, so, for instance, in the draft background we wrote on page 10, um, he suggested we remove the second paragraph, which is not germane to the immediate business at hand. It's giving the history of PEG, what it is, some citations. He said it's just not necessary. So I, I can share that if you want. But this um, this article um, was somewhat hastily brought to our attention in February when um, the state legislature did not take some action that perhaps DOR or DLS thought they would take uh, in December. And there was a deadline of July 1st, 2019, which um, was not moved out once the legislature did not act. So that, that behooved uh, some cities and towns that had not already taken action to take some within that four and a half month period. Cities, it's a little easier. City councils meet frequently. Towns, it's a little more tricky with the town meeting. But at least we were able to get this in as a Warren article. Um, if this Warren article does not pass, it's not clear to me that we can legally pass through money to RCTV. And I should add, um, RCTV and the town are currently in negotiations. The contract they have with us expires in May. Um, I don't want to comment much more on those negotiations, but let's assume that it's not this year and the contract's expiring and they exist. Um, they would stop receiving any money July 1st if this does not go through. Um, the second part of this is a budget. Since we're negotiating, we haven't produced a budget yet. I haven't asked them to. Um, as part of the budget process, which presumably then would start with me, I will need to, in the future, um, include as a revolving fund, a fourth revolving fund, the RCTV fund. And I would have to give some amount of description, whatever makes you comfortable in town meeting comfortable in order to pass it. So it could be one line, or it could be more than one line. I, I don't know. That's, that's a discussion. <coughs> For this year, um, because of the circumstances we find ourselves in, there's no way I could have produced such a budget, and maybe it wouldn't have been appropriate because the revolving fund doesn't exist yet. But on town meeting floor, should the revolving fund pass, there will need to be a line added to your scorecard for um, you know, cable access enterprise fund. It's just not there now in whatever amount. Historically, it's been in the $550,000, $600,000 range. 
and that's money that comes uh, from rate payers, uh, cable payers. A couple of bucks on each bill goes into what's called peg access, and that gets uh, sent through the town manager's office again to our CTV. So, so that's it in a nutshell. We're all kind of working under circumstances we haven't really anticipated to uh, accomplish this. And the town council and the town accountant worked on best vehicles to accomplish this and this seemed like the best one there really wasn't a lot of choices but again to emphasize if article 10 does not pass possibly could be amended I'm not sure how but if it does not pass um, there will be no peg as far as I can see uh, starting July 1st unless they're volunteers so that's the background what happened to that money if that was the case good question have to possibly keep in the general fund or possibly just segregate it. Um, the one other thing I could add, because um, Town of County spent some time dealing with Town Council on this, we were concerned that in, in May we're going to ask Town Meeting, you and the Town Meeting, to approve budget, whatever the number is. And the revenue that comes in during the year could be more or less than that. In fact, it will be more or less. If the revenue is more, we learned, as you'd expect, they can't spend it. That's okay. It's a reserve for next year. If it's less, do we have to pony up from the general fund, from taxpayers, money to supplement it? The town meeting gave them permission to spend 600000 but only 500000 came in. And we've learned that they cannot spend more than comes in. So they have the authority to spend six hundred, but there is not six hundred, and we don't have to be responsible for it. So the general fund's not on the No. General fund. Well, it, it depends how we write the contract, but that's how we will write the contract to make sure the general fund's not on the hook. I don't know if there are any folks who want to add. I mean, that's the way we've always done our budget, by we don't spend more than we get in. You know, so that's not a problem. Um, because we can't, but... But I really am concerned about the presentation for it that if it doesn't pass, because we have staff and we have equipment and we, town has expectations for peg, um, you know, stuff. So um, I that was the first that I kind of heard of it. So I'm a little, I'm Kathy Crook, by the way. Oh, I'm president of board of directors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so would it make sense for RCTV to be the ones making the presentation? Probably the town accountant and maybe then RCTV, yeah. Okay. And the article, will the article have a dollar figure? It will not. Okay, so it's just later there will have to be addressed in the budget itself. <coughs> no, it will not be. Okay. Right, because to underline the point, it will be managed like all the other similar This is just funds. creating it. Yeah, exactly. And then later yep. you deal with it. Right. It still has the controls and process under it that all the other funds do too. So it's yes. just the creation of it. Mm -hmm. So an option could also be to fund it for a particular dollar amount with a requirement for a reserve to be held. So it's more similar to the current system. Could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've talked about um, very briefly should should the town be charging an overhead you know, some of Sharon's time, for instance, and some nominal. I don't know the answer. That's negotiations. We'll deal with it. But imagine it just like a fourth enterprise fund, not identical, but very similar in concept. Um, you know, we don't know how many you know water revenues will come in. We estimate. They don't know. We'll estimate. We can't spend more than come in. If we spend less, it goes into reserves. They'll be in the same situation. So, sorry, would you envision seeing um, multiple lines similar to what we do with other accounts? I would ask Waves. your input on that because I don't, I don't, I've not seen a budget from them. I know one exists, Sharon's seen it, I just don't know. You know, if you have a level of detail you're interested in, certainly you could do it through me later or tonight, ask. Um, those do have, um, <clears throat> which are always looking forward or backwards. Has there, there been a trend in the revenues that you're getting either up or down? Or it's is trending it, down. It's trending now like everything else. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, court, we're, court, we're cut. cord cutting. We're affected by cord cutting because the fewer, yes. sure. because as Bob said, it's you know a couple dollars from everybody's yep. cable bill. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, yes. 
so they're not necessarily like increasing the per subscriber. Um, no. Do we have any ability to negotiate that with them? No. Not with Comcast. Because we just finished, the town just finished the Comcast negotiations. Verizon is um, 2021? Yep. 2021. So there might be, but they're probably not going to be. It's an ongoing agenda item for the board of directors to diversify our funds outside of the paper road. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just wondering, we probably all saw um, our tele telephone and cable bills kind of go like this over time. Has this contribution from the providers per subscriber been st a stable, or is that? <coughs> Let's say stable up until the last year. It's increased in the last okay. few years. Okay, because they're still all getting paid. They may not be yes. getting paid for cable per se. Okay. That's cable cool. bills generally don't go down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can drive. Yeah. It's temporary. Yeah. <laughs> the number of subscribers in town has changed. And it's changed. So. Do you folks have any feel for what other community stations are doing since everyone's facing this at the same time? Um, different, different communities are doing different things. Um, some are doing more of the PBS format of underwriting and sponsorship. Because we're a nonprofit, we have to be non commercial in nature. We can't have full out advertising, no call to action. So, and that, I believe that language exists in the Comcast and Verizon contracts with the town of Reading, so we have to be non commercial. So, there's the PBS format of becoming, you know, the underwriting. This program is brought to you by, so you may see what looks like an ad moving forward, but. Um, that's one opportunity, but then <coughs> that's again hitting our local businesses up for funds, which is not not an easy thing to do. Uh, yeah. So, um, as soon as this goes through, and you know, year after year, you're going to get you know, uh, Comcast is going to send the money in, um, but your budget is higher. So, I guess this is a question maybe for Bob. So, let's say. Um, you know, the, the Comcast revenue comes in at X, but their budget is X plus, they can still spend the plus if they raise their own money, right? Um, so if town meeting has passed a budget that shows that. It's just like any other budget. You have to identify sources of funds. So it could be they can't spend more than a town meeting approves. So even if it's donations, that has to be in the town meeting approval. My understanding, Sharon, do you think that's right? Their budget? Yeah. What we approve is the maximum that I can submit to them. If they raise money from other sources, I would think that that would be okay. Right. So if they, they can't can't you might want to check that. Because right. generally when town meeting passes a budget, that's the maximum. But I guess I'm viewing it like they're side. not a department of the town there yeah. who are outsourcing. Well, that's something we yeah. have to figure out because if, if, you know, Comcast comes in at a certain amount of money, and their budget's higher, but then they go out and raise those funds. Right. They should be able to spend those funds, you know, because they've raised them. Well, own. certainly if, if they're raising funds to s s fill a gap, yes. But if the budget's 600000 and they raise a million, they can't spend a million six, I think, if town meeting has not authorized that challenge check. Okay. So that's the way all of our spending works, and I do know this is different, but it's not a price fund, so I think that's going to be the answer. Right. But they are an independent board of directors, so but they can set their budget, but now it's going to look, it sounds like it's coming under the auspices of the town, whereas before it was yes. a private. Yes, and that's, the legal intent was so that rate payers have more transparency as to where their money's going and how it's being spent. Okay. That'll be an interesting process to figure out. Mr. Robinson. So, uh, so any organization that, that relies on revolving fund support, uh, which this will be, right? Uh, so this is an enterprise fund as opposed to a revolving fund. Okay. So, so there's only four. Well, three now. Water, sewer, okay, storm, water. said revolving fund earlier. Oh, did I? Okay. So not that. they, if that would be the case, a lot of revolving organizations that rely yeah. on a revolve still raise other funds for yeah. other things. Yeah, no, I, if I said revolving a circle, it was a mistake. It's, it's an enterprise fund. My head's revolving. So it's kind of hard to uh, give you a lot of feedback on what things should look like if we yeah. don't know what they've looked like in the past either. Well, you, you see what the current water sewer 
stormwater budgets are. You know, do you want to see wages, expenses, capital, debt? Those are the four things that come to mind. Well, and tonight, do we have to decide? Absolutely not. Right. So to no, me, this, this is the first step of creating the account. Yeah. 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 Where the general fund we've confirmed is not liable for any, right. you know, additional spending. So I think we're gonna. It's gonna be a process, and this is the first step. Yeah. That this part of it would just be helpful for all of us in order to prepare for the meeting, because as you can imagine, preparing for a town meeting for such a surprise would be a challenge. <laughs> You're doing what? It's not in the warrant report. It's not in the book. I don't know how to put it in the book other than the fact there's an article saying you're creating a fund. Right, so we'll continue to have more dialogue about this. Yeah. Any other questions from the committee? Or anyone else? Do you want to entertain a motion to deal with this article at this time? I was thinking we would do the voting all later, but... We could do it now. I could go by the way. What do you think? You don't want to keep them in suspense. Exactly. Yeah. I know. Because then we're going to have to support stay here for those three hours. Like <laughs> 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 they said they were going to go home and be glued to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll entertain them. All right. So, Bob, if we move the article as written, you've got a bunch of changes. How do you want to do uh, it? No, the article, the Warren article is fine. The town council made some suggestions on our oh, okay. description only. Okay. okay, so move to approve Article 10 in the warrant as written. Second. Any other discussion on this? All right, all in favor? <laughs> Seven <years. laughs> uh, Do you want to assign someone to do a report? No, yeah, we, we should. Do that we should uh, well, why don't we do that all day? I'll kind of go through. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Just All right. Why don't we. Um, why don't we move to the enterprise funds at this point? Okay, I'll just spend a few minutes on this. Um, we've got a new uh, write-up today. And again, the only changes I made were... Uh, Sorry, did everybody get this? Was that a handout? Or uh, it was emailed during the day. Oh. Okay, to everybody. <laughs> um, I'll just describe the differences. All, all I did, what you were already shown, was add in the select board's vote last night on rates. So there's a new page describing water usage, water rates, and the combination of that. The uh, board voted last night to set rates for water at uh, up 3.7 percent and sewer up 8.5 percent starting next December. Um, if you're back into uh, what reserve usage is for those numbers, you get 550,000 for water and 450,000 for sewer uh, or a combination of a million. And one of the questions that came up last night, Mark didn't ask it exactly this way, but I eventually heard it this way, is um, you have a cash reserves policy. Maybe this summer you want to talk about water, sewer, storm, water reserves, and whether you want to have a policy on that. Because in theory, there's a, uh, I can't remember the number, I think it was uh, almost $10 million in reserves combined, and they're $10 million as a budget. Um, I think the board generally agrees there's some amount of that that's for emergencies, and you'll see one of them later tonight. But there's certainly four, five, six million that's not necessary, and in theory, a board could have used them all last night in order to reduce rates. I don't know of any board that ever would have done that since I've been here, but there's no prevention for it. Um, if you have a policy, that might guide boards in the future. Again, I don't know if Meaning this is a policy of what level it should be at as per se. Re reserve usage. Yes. Like yeah, yeah. you say in the general fund, we should maintain a minimum of 7%. <coughs> you might say something about water, sewer, so storm water. Um, you don't really have a policy about using reserves. You think about that. You know, just to pick a number, um, you know, it, it, it would be suggested that no more than 10% of reserves be used to offset rates. I don't, I'm just making the number up, whatever it is. But FinCom historically has had no role in this. Um, and it is a financial issue. Um, normally, until five years ago, the board was voting rates after town meeting. 
and a few town meeting members, actually quite a few, came up to me and asked if they could do it in March. It would be much more helpful to the discussion at town meeting to know what rates are, because budgets and rates are just not the same. So I just throw that out there as food for thought at a future um, FinCom meeting. Just to throw a drop more color into that, um, this kind of this emergency portion, which is, is definitely there, but there are also long-term capital needs anticipated that go out a couple of decades or so, but there are large numbers. So yeah. one could decide to hold some extra capital in anticipation that those are definitely coming. Um, we also know that there's going to be, we anticipate like a couple of percent increase per year anyway <coughs> from MRA. That's right. So the decision probably could be made as to what the appropriate reserve level would be. No, it's a great point too because in reality, a select board is an elected board, so they they might have a short term motivation to lower rates more aggressively. Use. So I I think it's a valid point. I think we should take it up as a discussion. Okay. Um, I don't have any other really comments about the enterprise funds. The budgets are the same as previously presented. I guess the comment I'll just repeat that I made last night is uh, water and sewer especially are very, very long-term planning vehicles, um, 25 to 50 years. Um, in theory, we can do that with roads, but we have a pretty much guaranteed, hopefully, source of funding of 600000 from the state and then another 400 from local. Um, and you do as many roads as that money can afford you, as opposed to here, there's emergencies. You know, you have to fix a water mit, a sewer station, so forth. So um, the planning on this does go up very many years. And the dollars that we're looking at to spend are large dollars over the future. Um, there are still water mains from the 1890s in this town. If you look at the newspaper last night, somewhere one of them broke, not ready. But something from I think it was 1880. Oh, I think so. Nice. They built good stuff back then, but it is old. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, the, the new water tank, the Warren, other Warren article is going to come out of this fund? Yes, correct. That's what I thought. Um, one of the Warren articles, there's actually a couple to spend um, water funds for a couple of things. One's um, water main improvement, and the other's water tank. Yes. So I don't know if there's any other questions about enterprise funds broadly. Anything from the committee, Mark? Uh, at some point, can you help us just tie the the numbers on the scorecard to what would you and I walk through right Yeah, we'll do it now because it is intuitive. <laughs> uh, folks want to turn to the water budget. Um, whether you have today's or the previous one, you can see uh, water gross costs for FY20 of just over 7.2 million. This is page 70. Okay, thanks. All right. And then you see in the scorecard a water enterprise fund of 6.6 .6 million. So the question is why is it different? <clears throat> if you look at the elements of the water gross costs, one of them has already been voted as a budget somewhere else, and that's the one that called, is called general fund support. So that's part of Sharon's salary, part of my salary. It's in a lot of other lines. It's already spoken for. This then provides revenue that goes into the general fund for pay for those. So you don't need to pay the same item twice. So if you take the 7.2 million of water gross costs and you subtract the general fund support, then you'll get with town meeting and you have to vote as a budget. Because again, the um, general fund support you are voting in another budget. Many right, budgets. one sort of accounting versus cash flow or something, sort of, right? Um, you just don't want to approve the twice. same money twice. Yeah. There are sorts the of water, the, when the select board sets rates, they have to account for this and find the cash to pay it. That's a whole different question. It's just not the water budget. It's someone <coughs> else's budget. It's water's responsibility to pay for it, but it is not their budget. So the 7.2 minus the 592,000 <coughs> tie ties the, to the 6.6. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's similar with the other enterprise ones. Is there any other line item that's similar? No, nope. just that just, one item. Just uh, general funds for three. three enterprise funds. Right, three. I mean, any other line item to break down? Nope. No. So if the 
committee wants to uh, start either plowing through the Warren articles or the budget, whatever you like. Off we go. Public works? We didn't. Um, <clears throat> what I was going to ask, so when we did the other town departments, there wasn't a proactive presentation. It was just the FAQ and then any questions that the committee had. So I was going to raise that again from a from a DPW perspective, but then also any other any other departments that were questions might linger. So we could do that now. That's fine. Um, any questions from the committee for? related to DPW or, or the other town budgets right now. Right, because we were also going to talk about capital, right? Then we do shared costs yeah. after that. Yeah. Oh, we okay. do. I figured we'd do it as you went through each line, but if we'll, you want to we'll do, do it separately, okay. whatever's convenient. Yeah. Any questions? Question? Yeah, Mark. Joe, on, um, in the budget, sorry, hey, Joe. <laughs> Um, budget book. One of the comments you make is uh, departments looking at refining the asset inventory with significant input from the current building committee to be sure all needs are met in the budget. Um, is that something that's just kind of starting now? That process. So we're we've gone through all five elementary schools so far on the school side, and we just started the Parker Mill School. And what they well, first of all, we developed an assessment tool with with them, and. The assessment tool looks at all the different conditions of the buildings. It looks at exterior grounds, uh, building envelope, um, so site building envelope, and it goes into the interior of the building, finishes all the building systems that make up the structure. <coughs> There's a rating index that we're using that um, rates each system on its uh, condition and they're going through and it's, it's been a long process and they're going through and from each building we're getting what I'm going to call a deficiency list. And that deficiency list, we Bob was with us the other night at the uh, PBC meeting on Monday night at Parker. And that deficiency list will be, um, they basically put it into our hands and say, you know, looking for facilities department and how, how we're going to handle it. A lot of it will be handled through our uh, operating budget. Um, they are looking at what's in the capital plan because they have the capital plan and they've been reviewing that as well as the um, the, uh, the inventory, the asset inventory, all the equipment in the buildings, just the conditions. There's been nothing that's jumped off the page. They, our, our, our capital plan is in good shape. Um, we do have some capital coming up in some years you know, going forward. Um, but we're going to take that, uh, what I'll call the deficiency list, and we're going to uh, report back to them next week, probably how we're going to be handling it and you know, what, our, what we're going to be doing. Um, so really, that's what we're doing. So they're, they're looking at everything. They're looking at the condition of the building and looking at how it ties into the capital plan. And it, is there things we're not looking at? There's been a few things that they've seen that maybe we didn't see, but nothing jumped off the page as being, you know, uh, poor condition, I, I, I'll say. Um, they're very, um, they're, they're taking it a uh, hard look at the buildings um, as a, a private consultant would come in and do. Uh, and there's all different disciplines in, in the permanent building committee, you know, MEP, um, civil engineering, architecture. Um, so we have a good mix of uh, expertise around the table. So that's what that means. Yeah, we getting a report town meeting from the permanent building. November and from now on November is there. Oh, time. always November. Okay, because I that, agree. There's a lot of tremendous work being done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a great process. It is. Just at a high level. They're and detail As you say, the skill set to pay for that yeah. kind of skill set. True. So, I was able to see the wood end one, and oh, yeah, yeah. we're getting a good deal, man. Yeah. <laughs> the work they're doing, they're putting a lot of work into it. So, mm -hmm. it's a great new set of eyes that reinforces yeah. the capital plan we've already got. So I can't say enough for the effort they're putting in this. So it's good to know if they're going to be at least giving a November report. Um, so Sean couldn't be here. He's okay. he's out sick, but he did email me a couple questions. 
Um, one I'll throw out now, the, the ones related to the capital, so we can wait till we get there. But this one, we'll, we'll sure. channel my channel my best uh, inner Sean Brand here. <laughs> What's that? You just even become Sean. Oh, yeah. Change your persona. <laughs> Um, Four thousand dollars for a sound engineer is what he flagged. I'm just reading the email, and I'm not sure where exactly that it's is. In uh, one of the Warren articles. Okay. He's he, he, he's asking what 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 are the expectations around what that will uh, accomplish? Uh, is there any path to having the developer pay for any remediation that might arise from that study? So uh, that's the question. Let's wait for Gene to come back. I right. can answer it, but. She'll have more fun answering it. <laughs> um, she was in touch with uh, a Frenchman recently who's going to do the work. I don't know that it's going to cost 4000 It might be less. It really depends on how what scope it is. Uh, but I'd really rather her it okay. more thoroughly. So you say it's in capital? Yeah, no, it's a request for her operating budget for FY19. It's in, what, it's in the Warren article for, that deals with FY19 budget requests. Okay, all right, so let's flag that. Yep. I wonder if we work through the articles. Right. Unless anybody else is going, just jump questions right now, and then and then questions related to capital share costs, whatever, they'll come up as we as we get to the appropriate spot. So, good. All right. So. Which one's the first one? Do you want to do the budget or do you want to do the Warren articles? Why don't we do the, we do the, um, the Warren articles? Because okay. then we'll just crush the, we'll yeah. the budget when we get to that one. All right. So, here we go. So, um, the illustrious chair will be reported under Article 2, but you know, the Article 3 is the capital improvement program. Excuse me. Um, is the draft warrant online because we forgot our copies? Yeah, I don't find it. Really. Um, it is. I don't think it went out of it. Did it go earlier? Yeah, I don't think we got sent out. It did? Uh, All right, yeah. I'll, I'll find it. Is it. I might have the email address. Do you want me to go print it? Actually, I might have a couple extra here. I tend to travel. Heavy. Heavy. <laughs> heavy. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. With town council comments, she wouldn't want that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me mine here. Take that. I think that's I all we're going to get you. Yeah. Warren Town council. Yeah. Um, Article three. That's uh, instructional motions, no actions. Article okay. four is the capital improvements program. And I guess I'll address an issue in that, but let me just walk through what's being requested. Um, I mentioned to you last week that we uh, secured a $500,000 grant after I submitted the budget to you. Um, so in the capital plan itself, this isn't mentioned, but I need to add it, and I have. Um, so the first item you're going to see in FY19 for the general fund is a $0 track road bridge, parentheses S, could be bridges. Um, bond council agreed that it, it really needed to be in the capital plan in order for us to accept the grant. So there'll be no town funds for this. There's no matching or anything else. We don't know if the 500,000 will do one or two bridges. Um, so we better just say plural. So that's somewhat of a housekeeping item, but it's an important one in order for us to accept the grant. Um, there's no other capital changes in FY19 requested. Again, that's zero dollars. Bob, you said that was what? Article? Article 4. four. Article 4. Nice. Okay. Uh, in FY20, there's one, two, three, four um, items uh, being pushed out or being changed, being reduced in order to make room for uh, debt service for Turf 2. Um, the more significant one is the Coolidge Middle School HVAC system. Um, Joe had previously asked for it in FY21, and I think it was last November, a town meeting, we were able to move it up, and now we're moving it back because we just needed to uh, produce enough room for debt service. FY21, there's the Coolidge HVAC system being pushed out a year. The uh, DPW scheduled site work at Birch Meadow 
used to be an FY21 is 200,000. And again, last November it was split into 200,000 pieces, one in FY21 and 22, and now it's back to the way it was. And these changes were all based on financial availability. So the only reasons they changed weren't, there wasn't any urgency to anything, there wasn't any reason to do it sooner or faster. It's just the money that was available. So really there's not a lot of capital changes other than a little rearranging and making room for TURF 2 project. Right, so does it make sense to have an update on TURF 2? Um, for when we're actually it depends. It. I, I want to make a couple broad comments. There is specific Warren articles that deal with some of these okay, capital. So take them. Um, well, let, me, let me talk about um, the field lighting down at Birch Meadow because that's certainly one of the areas that's been some question. Um, just to make it clear, there is no request in front of you or town meeting that would put any money towards that right now. It still remains in the capital plan in a future year with an estimated cost. Um, but there is no immediate funding. My understanding is uh, the rec committee uh, has, you know, they've, they've done a survey. I, I saw the results in January. They're about to release them, or maybe they just have. They also are working as a subcommittee on Birch Meadow improvements. And a placeholder in written form only is in the capital plan because we don't know what they want to do and what the amount is. We've written down a million dollars as an estimate. I'm certain it's going to be less than that, but we don't have a number. Um, so projects that are not immediately funded is really not under uh, FinCom's immediate purview from a spending standpoint. But if FinCom doesn't like what's in the capital plan, even if it's not this year, this is where you would change it under this article. Um, and I'll give you the reason that the lighting is still listed in there from my perspective. It's a past town meeting, passed an article, the recreation committee requested it, FinCom approved it, what have you. Um, the survey results I saw in January strongly support the need for it. I'm not otherwise giving an opinion, I'm just not. I think it would be disrespectful to the town meeting to take it out. I don't have a reason to take it out. Because in the past it was proved. But if we're sitting here in a year, or we're sitting here next November, and nothing has changed, I will absolutely move it further out. Because there's no way that we're ready to do that today. Um, we did discuss it last November uh, at a financial forum over at the high school. And when you were saying we really need to do turf too sooner, I was saying, well, why don't we do the lights as a package deal, because it's going to be cheaper. Um, after that meeting, I spent a lot of time meeting with the schools, and honestly, they wanted no part of that complication. They wanted turf too fixed. That's what you said. I agreed. So we did not move that forward. We left it where it was in FY21, and turf two, as you can see, has moved forward. So that that specific item is, in my mind, a discussion for another day. But just so that we go in eyes wide open, there. I want to make sure we're not spending money foolishly and then have to do anything to do light projects in the future. Do you understand why we were hearing that well, lights were going to impact getting Turf 2 done? Do you want to say anything about that, Joe? I mean, from, from my perspective, it was an economy is a scale thing. You've got someone out there, they're doing lights. Okay. It's cheaper. I can but that aside, that. Um, there was access to the other fields that would have been easier when Turf 2 was under construction. You want to add anything to that? Well, the only thing with the design on the on the turf two as it is right now, the the lights that are on the birch metal complex side are going to be engineered to be uh, able to accept another rigging of lights to illuminate that section right there. So there is so for for a future use. Well, so to take in the, into account, if we had another project down the road, you could hang another row of lights off the back side, so that they're, they're built. They will be built to accommodate that. With this project, with, with the turf project. project. Okay, so we're doing something sort of flexible to leave us flexible. Yeah, and I know this isn't about the lights. We may drop me, but I think it will be beneficial when we start doing this. Come up with some good sort of schematics or um, plots because. I don't know where lights are. I don't know where we're proposing them to go. So yeah, it would be very I, helpful, I know. I would presume that recreation would be in the driver's seat on this mm -hmm. and that they will hold yeah. public meetings to discuss it. Um, if they don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure the select board would be interested in doing it. Maybe they do a joint. But yeah, a lot of information has to get out to the community, certainly. And we'll have to update the costs. We haven't looked since last summer, really. 
I mean, we have the turf two pricing now, but one never knows. And and to address a comment that's in a really obscure section of the budget uh, here, I've listed that more more is a reminder to Sharon and I. There's already nine hundred thousand authorized for this project. That has nothing to do with cash available. That's a technical thing. If we go back and we need a million four, which is the current estimate for um, the birch metal lights. It's a reminder to me to only ask for 500,000 in authorization. Mm -hmm. We still need the million four, but technically the 900,000 is on the books until Sharon asked town meeting to rescind it. Mm -hmm. And we still assumed it was a future project, so we haven't asked town meeting to rescind it. If someone decides it's not going to ever happen, we'll rescind it. We'll ask town meeting to rescind it. So hopefully that clears up. Um, you know, kind of the situation around that topic because I know there's been some questions at different meetings about it. Um, as it. Excuse me, as it relates to evaluating priorities next year and future years, we would go through the same process saying which are the highest priority projects to go into the capital plan for that year. So lights, as you said, might fit at some point. Recreation might say it's a priority and then it's going to come before the various groups to say, yes, it is a priority. Um, yes. And if they don't at that time, it would continue to get pushed further down the road or at some point kind of taken off completely. Yeah, if, if you think, if you take a few steps back and think of the larger capital projects, work at an elementary school, I think we all understand is, is an exclusion. It cannot be done inside the level. Um, that is likely, although not as, as positive, if we do anything with a senior center and anything with a DPW garage, that's probably the same path, unless we get really creative. Um, the area where it gets a little tricky is athletics and recreation, because there's smaller projects within a total of about $7 million. Um, so it's, it is possible to do a million here and a million there within the levy. If you want to do all seven at once, it's not, it's not possible. But if you want to wait in over a period of 10 or more years, do it, you can. So it's a little tricky to discuss how to prioritize things that have different sources of funding. You could certainly rightly compare all the debt exclusions and say, let's line them up. This one's the most important, this is next, so on and so forth. Um, Four million is a large number um, for building security. Um, it could have been done as a debt exclusion, but I think I said this to you last time. I agree with what my predecessor said, said is you don't you don't ask taxpayers to vote on something that you won't accept a no on. And John and I and others felt very strongly that this is something we have to do. And if we ask voters for money and they say no, we still have to do it. So we want to be respectful of voters. Um, of all the capital projects, um, I, I can speak for him that that's the number one priority for both of us is building security. After that, you know, whatever fits. And most of these other things are relatively small. Um, you know, you you moved up turf too, and I understand why, and, and I agree with it. But it matters. Um, whatever's next up, again, it'll be a community discussion, and ultimately, FinCom will decide something, and then town meeting will decide something. So, it's it's a little tricky to create a process where all these things come in, into the same funnel. But ultimately, you see you see them all. It's a little harder to compare outside there. And I think in the past, the criticism that the town has received is over the big ones, not the million here, million there. It's over library, override, school. Um, and I think we've got that fixed. The Permanent Building Committee is a really good solution. They've, they've done a great job so far. And when projects fall in their lap, you'll be very comfortable how they're going to handle it. But they're not going to decide priorities. They've made that clear. It's still hard to get people to present. So it's always a challenge, I think. Yeah. So I, I did spend a little more time this year. I spent a lot of time in the school department talking about different projects. But I spent a little more time writing up backgrounds on capital this year just so everyone would have better information. And you know, to the extent it wasn't transparent before, I hope it's very transparent now because the, the, the intent was never for it not to be transparent. We, we are clearly coming to a point, though, where, thankfully, the operating budget is not the crisis. Okay. Figuring out which capital projects to do. It's not a crisis, but it's now more on the front of us. 
um, and you know, ultimately, obviously, town meeting will decide. But I think it's my job to get you the information you have, and then off we go on the process. And on turf two, we didn't go the extra length. That didn't make any sense. No, we did not. No, no. That was from. The, I would be. Yeah. That, wasn't there something? getting the right regulation for, for certain purposes. It was but also a lot of the, the updates that we gave to school committee where school committee voted not to proceed with exploring that option was also from a <coughs> conservation standpoint the complications of attempting to do it with a lot of the groundwork and everything else and we do have a regulation field at Parker. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are able to, we have to be careful to make sure we don't do something at one field and not the other but we do and the, the Parker. And, and we have the stadium. Thank you. It was conservation yeah. and, and infrastructure issues, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. But we have the regulation for some of the places. Yes, we do. It's a good financial decision, too. Yeah. Please. Just to clarify, though, the lights that are on Turf 2 are included in that project, not the extension of the lights to the Birch Meadow field. Correct. Mm -hmm. the, the way we are doing it is looking at Birch met, um, turf two, turf two with lights. So it's just the lights on turf two will be one of the options for pricing up. Just wanted to clarify there. Thank you. So just to clarify, that is the article is with the lights at turf two. <coughs> it is, is two with lights. funding, and then yeah, when we it, it's to approve the fund. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the funding for it, and then the articles are always written with some yeah. some room. So the article is to do work on turf yeah. two. Right. The motion is what specifies exactly what you're asking. Okay. The school committee has asked for the smaller size and lights, and here you go. So this is what it costs. So and the way and that's the background we'll describe that. So the way it would grade. get bid out would be to do options and alternatives such that knowing how much we have available, we have the option if it comes in higher than what we have available, we have options we can remove out that way. But right now it's all-inclusive. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mark, it's an upgrade of the lights because the way they are right now, and Joe, you can correct me, uh, is you can't play a, a lacrosse game there at night because of the, the speed of the ball, which is the light is not good. So, not safe. so it, it allows uh, us to be able to do that. And with the field problems in town, that's, that's a big, big plus. Um, I'll just finish uh, going over the article. Um, enterprise funds, again, no action this year for water. Um, you can see a few things moved around, but not much of a change in, uh, in future years and, and next year. And as I mentioned last time, and I mentioned of the select board, there is a big uh, request for sewer for FY19. That's the $475,000 request to deal with some remediation we had to do at the Charles Street sewer station. Um, we found some arsenic, but no old lace in the hole. <laughs> and um, it, it was, it's, it's unfortunate, naturally, that you run into a half million dollar item, but it's fortunate that we do have the reserves. And it's, and it's exceptionally fortunate that, believe it or not, that was a good result based on the possibilities. It was not in the groundwater, otherwise we'd have been looking at millions of dollars. So, and we have no idea how it got there. Um, and no other significant changes in any of the enterprise fund capital. And that completes uh, Art 4. And I see that lead rhymes with red. Yes, I thought I'd better say that. Um, do you want me to yeah, keep going sense. or do you want to vote? So, yeah, so this. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I posted about. Is there a question oh, that I missed? Yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah, it's the next article. I think. Okay. So, yeah, so the article, what do we just do? Four. Article 4 is, is amendments to the current capital improvement program. We landed in discussion around Turf 2, et cetera, because part of this makes room for, for that. Um, any opinions from the committee, whether we vote as we go or, or hear it all and then do all the voting? I might incline toward the former, but. One um, reason I was thinking, vote as we go in case yes. people are here for just particular. Yep. Yes, yes, yep. Okay. Any other entertain a motion? Move to accept Article Four as written. Second. Second. 
right. Any other discussion on Article 4? All those in favor? 7-0. Article 5 amends the current year's budget. <clears throat> um, next week I'm meeting with the um, school town and light department union, so I don't want to say much about health insurance. <coughs> uh, but I will say in the current year we do have a surplus. Um, I am proposing here uh, to use 412,000 of the surplus. That still leaves a little wiggle room in case something happens, but it's certainly been a very good year in health insurance and so will next year. Um, the, the way I backed into the next few numbers is we, we needed 137000 to fund all the other numbers. Um, that provides 275000 and my suggestion is to put that in OPEB, to add to the annual OPEB contribution. As, um, as you may know, and Sharon mentioned it previously, if you increase your pension funding, you're stuck with increasing it forever until it's defeased. In OPEB, there's no such rules, so if you want to make a one-time increase, you don't have to do it again in the future. So it's just my suggestion where you know, the source was health insurance premiums. If, uh, if health insurance premiums had been high, we would have dipped into the OPEB. This is the opposite. Um, the Vogue schools, we can cross out. Um, you'll, you'll find it interesting that we just learned we had no students at Minuteman after them telling us we needed 63,000 last November, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the details of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the vocational schools is somewhat mysterious to me. Um, it, and just to follow up on vocational schools, um, the schools see applications and pass them around to me. Um, for instance, I can't remember the number, but there's a huge amount of applicants for the Essex North Folk School next fall. Um, the schools are less than careful about ever telling us what happens, much as we might try. By law, they don't count a student until, I don't know, October 15th or something like that in a school. Like the kid doesn't exist until October, November. Wow. You never know, maybe they disappear. Did um, they have five, Joe? Yes. Oh, yes. I guess I didn't even realize yes. that. Oh. And there's, they don't always get in by any means. Didn't know in fact, okay. I'm sure a small percentage get in. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Is there a way to influence them? <laughs> We've tried. I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would like to get the information soon. I don't understand why we don't have that, but we do the best we can. The uh, main book school in Wakefield, they do it on a lag basis, so we know how many students we're paying for next year. It's how many are in there this year. And that way you don't have to wait till whatever. So that, that is fine. But the vote budget for this year is fine. Uh, the town clerk has requested to replace, to replace an election equipment trailer. It's starting to rust. It's uh, kept down at the DPW garage outside, which is fine if we just had a new trailer. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really have to ask you at town meeting, but we're just showing that um, some of the training expenses were actually done by our labor council, so we're asking money to be moved from one line to the next. Uh, Gene's department has had a, a couple of vacant positions, most notably the economic development director position. We're moving enough money such that if we hired one in the next week or so, we still have more of that. And the job is posted, and there have been uh, applicants, but no interviews yet. We're just about getting close to that part. And she's had a couple of other vacant positions that provide a little bit of funding. <coughs> Jean, your question was in um, expenses. So let me just go over them and, and highlight the one that was asked. Um, Jean has asked for 60000 of outsourced professional services. 50,000 of that, for any of you that have followed the Eaton Lakeview uh, 40B project, the developer has contributed an amount and the town should contribute an amount in order to do a traffic study for the neighborhood. So I think, did the developer kick in 20 or 25? 20,000. Okay, so 20 and we're kicking in 50. Um, the next identifies is $4,000 for a sound engineer at the Met. And that was the question, and I think as I might have mentioned the FinCom last week, 6000 is just unknown. If just we have it in case we need it, if we don't need it, it goes back to the general fund. Um, and, la and lastly, we're reducing our veterans' benefits. We just don't have as many veterans, sadly, this year. But the, the question was, why the need for the sound engineer and what are we getting for it? Sure. And I mentioned the guy was French. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a, what we call a noise study. Um, we've been 
monitoring the site and tracking complaints and if anybody's interested it's posted on the town website under the zoning board of appeals and under the project so um, that will show you I think there's been about 25 or so entries into the spreadsheet they're not all complaints some of them are comments or notes or whatever but um, I've been maintaining that spreadsheet since November and any complaints that I'm aware of get entered in on that spreadsheet and we've had some complaints about noise although um, they don't reflect on the spreadsheet because they didn't come directly to me but um, in response to the complaints we thought it best to get a professional out there to determine if there is a noise issue and the reason why there is uh, perhaps concern over noise is because the, the site is being heated uh, because of winter conditions and so there are actual heaters that are running 24 7 and the heaters um, have some impact in terms of sound I don't know and I don't want to pretend to know um, exactly what that impact is and so we thought hiring a professional independent of the developer independent of the town that could come in and he's going to install um, four monitoring stations uh, around the site and then one of them will be uh, one of the four will be slightly away from the site and we'll collect data and determine if we have a noise problem and one of um, sean's question was couldn't the developer pay for it mm -hmm. um, that works fine if it's before construction starts and there's a legal document agreed to site plan review for instance so for the traffic study for Eaton Lakeview that's been thoroughly discussed and agreed to um, we could ask uh, a developer to do it now and he may or may not do it if he does do it he may hire his own sound engineer and those results may not be reliable so the amount of money we're talking about we just thought we'd spend the money to do it right so do we have code that says this is the volume level allowed for construction um that's a tricky thing to answer the state has uh, DEP has a standard that um, is a state is a standard that lots of people go by a recommended uh, standard for, for noise um, typically when you get into this it's very complicated um, and lots of cities and towns have a noise bylaw or ordinance and that makes it very simple well simpler I should say to um, to understand which regulation you're going by um, I ran it by town council to make sure I was clear on which regulation are we using here and town council's response was collect the data do the study and then we'll determine which regulation can, we, can I ask a question I mean are we couldn't this just get flipped around like you said if the contractor does his own study you're going to dispute the results isn't the contractor if there's no no tiebreaker here they're going to dispute our results so I don't know it just seems seems like a funny expense to me for in but it's a temporary situation as well yeah, and I get that and I sympathize sympathize with the neighbors don't get me wrong I just I wonder if we're if we're you know walking into a situation where we do have to pay town council on top of this study to unwind a conflict and that's all you can call it so that's that's my only caution and thought on the, the whole thing there's one other piece that I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned is um, we do have a construction hours bylaw mm -hmm. in our general bylaw and in that construction hours bylaw we do talk about noise impacts during construction okay. now whether or not this applies to that regulation that was my question um, and I'm not sure I'm really not sure yeah it would seem like you'd want something from town council saying if you this do this we're gonna we're gonna we can apply right. X it, right. you know That's having to switch you just do it seems like a, a funny answer from town council to begin with let alone you know <laughs> right, because we don't know what we're measuring against. Yeah. What are we doing? What are we measuring? If I hear for? construction noise outside of those bylaw hours, I'm calling. 
I'm like, because if I can hear it, it's construction noise coming from a project. So it seems cut and dry, but maybe. Yeah. So what? It might seem strange that we're even having this conversation. Like, why are these heaters running 24 hours? <laughs> right? Shut them off. Well, in the world of construction, um, if you don't heat a site during winter conditions, and all the pipes are there, and there's water in those pipes, and there's not enough heat, you're going to have a problem. So if the town were to say, oh, we're, I'm the town of Reading, I'm shutting you down. Turn that heater off, and those pipes first, uh, now we're liable. But isn't the issue more of sound mitigation as opposed to... Which they have done. They have well, built enclosures some. around yeah. these heaters. And um, That's why you need the professional. Sound yeah. attenuation steps have been taken, which is in the general bylaw. As long as they take steps to deal with the sound, um, the bylaw, that's what the bylaw calls for. So it gets into a very, very complex, detailed situation. It seems like by the time we're even be looking to spend this money, we're going to be over the freeze home. Uh, I don't know about Oops. that. <laughs> I don't know. March 31st, 1997. When do we expect yeah, to get the results of the study? Um, they're planning to do it. If they don't get to it at the end of this week, probably sometime next week. So soon. I just be okay. But it won't be through time meeting. That's just sort for. Of what do you mean, three before? Right. I'm just saying this is for town meeting right. to vote on. So we're doing something before it's been approved. Well, That's we need to question. spend the money in order to hire him, regardless of whatever he finds. So that's the request, is to hire him. Anyone else? Um, the next few lines are vacation buybacks. There's different amounts of people. I, I don't remember them all, but I remember Public Works. I think there's five employees there. And um, as I've I mentioned in the past, sick leave buyout is a diminishing uh, liability. But if, depending on the position and depending on the circumstance, if we know someone's going to leave and there's someone that's hard to replace, ideally, you'd like to have some overlap. You know, here's what I do, here's how I do it for two weeks. So much more often, these numbers are you know, we don't let the person take vacation as they're about to leave the door, so we have to pay them for three weeks vacation or whatever it is. That's much more typically what these are. In DPW, I, I think but I meant it's, it, it's, you know, it's called sick leave slash vacation, but this is not much sick leave. Because yeah. I get the vacation, of course. Yeah, that's been taken out of all negotiated it's diminishing contracts. And Some very people few still left. have it. Yeah. Um, and we may need to start putting them back because when you don't have a reason to save your sick time, you might just be using a lot of it. That's a different issue for another day. The uh, younger workforce is very creative. Um, Memorial Park, I mentioned we had to make some repairs. Uh, $30,000 will do it. OSHA has some new regulations that the town and schools have had to go through, especially facilities. There'll be annual requests. This is a one-time request, 20000 and they do have a surplus fuel. And then there's a combination, as you can see, in town buildings, which is a relatively small budget of several different things, costing an additional 20000 approximately. Uh, normally, you wouldn't see things from facilities because it's a bottom line. The core is a bottom line number. There's always things moving around. But the town building budget is much smaller, and we do have to make that request. To pay for this, uh, we're, we are asking that 70000 that would have gone to the Economic Development Director not be used from the planning, uh, from the revolving fund. And you know, with all these figures, they balance to zero in free cash. Um, you'll notice there's no snow and ice. I don't know yet. I haven't run it. The last time I ran it, there was a couple hundred thousand. Well, we got 61000 61000 <laughs> Don't spend it anymore. Oh, no, never mind. I didn't we'll say that. We'll all go do it in front of our house. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore that white powder outside. Okay. Um, the other item is that 475000 I mentioned to come from sewer reserves for the uh, Charles River, I'm sorry, Charles Street and Sewer Station project. And that, that finishes the F-119 figures. Now, 
There's right. always the possibility we'll come back to you either on the floor or time meeting before. I don't know if anything other than snow and ice would cause that, but you never know. So, but that's what it is right now. And, you know, if there's a controversial issue, it might be the OPEP one. But there is surplus. So, that was my suggestion. I agree. And I thought it's general policy we talk about that, that in general yeah. we want to do. We hadn't really imagined it going in this direction very often. Mm -hmm. More the other. Right. Do you want a motion? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion to accept Article 5 of the Second. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Can we just revisit the, um, the noise study and, uh, and approving the Approving something now, and then it would it would actually be spent before town meeting has an opportunity to vote on it. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. I know it doesn't feel right. <laughs> if, if, they vote no, if, <laughs> if town meeting does vote no, and Jean does run out of money, then at the, the, the end of the answer. year, Fincom might have to do a reserve fund transfer. And if it was a really big amount, more than your reserve fund, then the select board and you would meet in joint session and transfer it for some of the line. You've only had to do that once in 15 years. But bills have to be paid. Otherwise, it's going to be a next year bill, you know, a prior year bill in a year. Um, can I just have a uh, follow-up on um, what, um, what the results of the, of the study, what will the results of the study tell us, or what will... It allow us to do would it a lot depending on what the you know then we would find out the regulation is then would we have the opportunity to to compel the developer to engage in more noise mitigation is that the is that what we're trying to accomplish uh, I, I can answer what I would hope to accomplish is something comes back to the suggestion the developer agrees that's the simplest course mm -hmm. if the developer doesn't agree and we have to involve town council I don't know what the result of that might be. Hopefully it's just something so simple, and as you say, time's on our side in terms of this particular element of noise. Um, hopefully it'll just be mitigated if it needs to be. The other piece is that with all the construction going on and planned, this hopefully sets something of a precedent mm -hmm. in terms of how you can mitigate noise and that it's appropriate to mitigate noise. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on Article 5? All those in favor? None opposed. 7 0 passes. Um, we can jump to skip seven. Article 7 because, I'm sorry, 6 because right. there's no prior year bills. Um, you see a list of surplus equipment. Uh, it, it sort of speaks for itself. We'd just like you to approve that we could, uh, most of those will be traded in. Why do they always have great names? <laughs> the Grizzly Wood Joiner. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy it now, don't you? <laughs> the, the powder puff for wood joiner to sell. <laughs> now, were you talking about a different process so we don't have to have it? That'll be next, yeah. Oh, oh that's fair. Just the yeah, okay. that, that came before. Big that. Tech Utility Trailers. Yeah. Yeah. Big Tech. Um, and to point something out that I wasn't aware of, but I guess it makes sense. Um, two of these items were received as donations, but we still have to declare them a surplus. So the police received two uh, fitness equipment, and the town is obligated. We, we can't just throw it away. Uh, we have to get permission. <laughs> Do you want to do a rolling structure of people who uh, move the question and those who second this? Oh, with, with the score chart. Right, yeah, right, right. right. And with that, I'll, I'll make a motion but to accept Article 7. <laughs> Seems like we're turning in that direction. I'm being a hog. <laughs> Karen seconded. Any other discussion on Article 7? All right, all those in favor? None opposed, 7 0. Now, Article 8 answers your question, Paula. Um, this, will, um, this will delete a general bylaw. Well, I, I'm sorry, a section of the general bylaw. That's a better way to say it. Um, there is a general bylaw, six, section 6.2, to put disposal of surplus property. The, um, the select board meeting on March 26th has a schedule of two of our employees to go in and visit and present 
a uh, policy that they were going to ask the select board to adopt. The Japanese bylaw committee has reviewed the policy and, and agreed it would replace this bylaw quite nicely. So the bylaw committee has given their approval to Article 8 contingent on the board adopting a policy before town meeting. So if the board does not adopt a policy, uh, my guess is someone will move to table this article because you have to have one or the other ways. Um, but this will simplify. The general bylaw says that for anything um, for $5,000 or more, there's a certain process. That's when state law was 5,000. Now it's 10,000, so we could amend the general bylaw and make it 10, but it's much more common, as you saw in the background, the practice is to take this out of town meeting's hands and just deal with it faster at the local level. So um, for items below 10,000, uh, we can just get, ask the select board to approve it. If it's close to 10,000, we'll still go through this process. So if we're not sure, and it could be 7,000, we'll probably still use this process. Items that have that kind of value normally are a little easier to plan because you're going to trade it in for something that's in the capital plan. So you have an idea of what you're doing. But for instance, the exercise equipment, there wasn't a plan other than it was getting old. And you know now we need to dispose of it. Uh-oh, we hadn't really thought it through in terms of getting the permission to dispose of it. So it, it just makes this process much simpler and much more streamlined. And again, it is contingent on the board adopting the policy. When's there? 26th. 26th. Yeah. So if FinCom wants to vote the same way the bylaw committee right. is contingent upon, that right. certainly wouldn't seem appropriate. And is, is it still bounded by Mass General Law at 10,000? Or is that yes. no longer? It is. So yes. up to 10 is all committed. Do we have um, anything on the town side? We ran into a little bit of an issue with our Melty years ago of disposing of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, does the town already have some constructs yeah. to Sharon here? You should answer yeah. that. Make sure she's, that she's, so we're she's town meeting won't be looking at this stuff anymore. So it's like a check. Yeah. So is there um, checks within your organization that would? Um, in terms of where the assets are, would you make sure they get disposed of properly disposed. and not like walk out the back door. In well, case that would ever happen. It's kind of like reverse <laughs> procurement where we're, there, we're looking for, we have Allison who puts things out. Um, and so we're looking to get the best possible price for mm -hmm. whatever it is we're selling, just like when we're purchasing, we want to get the best possible price when we're purchasing so that we're you know, getting, the, you know, we want to get the best deal for the residents when we're purchasing and the exact same opposite when we're selling. And so we do use some online option sites, so it depends on what it is. Um, and and we, we try and make sure we select the right venue to get us the best possible. Sometimes a trade is the best option, sometimes an online um, government website that we can sell some assets. So we do everything we can to make sure that we get something for the asset um, and we don't just end up having to throw it away. Right, and then, um, so a person in your staff hands that and you approve it, so there's like a couple people looking at this process? I actually see everything coming through the general vendor, so I see the actual um, proceeds, yep. uh, but it actually goes through Matt's department, which is um, the procurement officer works for Matt's department. Um, she's the one who would not oversee that whole process as well. Sometimes um, the department head is involved, like in DPW, Jane would be heavily involved working with Allison to make sure that they make the right choices about how they post um, an asset or something. Great. Thanks. Right. So, yeah, so like a, like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars exactly. asset couldn't slip by as a nine thousand dollar asset. Like there's all sorts of checks so that doesn't happen. Okay. Cool. All right. I have a motion on uh, Article Eight. So uh, a little more tricky. Um, we should discuss yeah. the contingency, which I would suggest we put in. Is that okay. yeah. So we look, we're looking for a motion, right? That right. that that articulated the contingency, the that the select board passes this. Exactly. They're meeting on uh, March twenty sixth. So have a try this. Move to accept Article Eight, subject to. Mark, if I might, let me read you what Town Council changed. <coughs> by the bylaw. Now, bylaw committee wrote this and voted it, but he's changing <laughs> what they should have said, which might be tricky. Cool. Um, he said, however, that vote is conditional on the premise that the select board, and I can obviously put this in a motion, that the select board adopts a written policy for disposal of surplus property prior to town meeting. It couldn't be any simpler. 
what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All right, got the motion from Mark on what Bob said, seconded by Karen. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? None opposed. Seven zero. <coughs> Article nine is to fund the OPEB trust. Um, we've talked about the uh, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Otherwise, this, this is to take amounts previously budgeted um, in the FY nineteen budget. So there'd be a total of eight hundred eighty thousand if you agree with the uh, two seventy-five. And uh, we have updated the recent OPEB liability as of a year ago, almost a year ago, 64 million. We're 6.2 percent funded. It's a two-step process, right? Of when we put money in OPEB, you put it in a line item to be able to either use it for health insurance if you need it, or move it into the trust if you don't. So this is the second step. Oh, this is the second. Right? Yep, that's the first. We second. always do it in April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And it's up by 275000 based on oh, yes. surplus. Yeah. Got it. So my concern in the past has always been that we didn't want the number to go up too much because it steals from the operating budget. That's the only place to take it from. This is the first time I can remember having a surplus to deal with. Yeah. Seems like a reasonable thing to do with it. And some of that also relates how we designed the override, right, in terms of benefits to make sure well, That's we a good point. Um, you know, we did um, allocate some funds to... Benefits. benefits, I guess I'll say, and that when it, it turned out to go to a couple of places, um, I, I didn't do the math, but some amount of the new positions approved it certainly did not start July 1st, so there's some sort of one-time savings this year. Is it 275000 Probably not that much, but some amount, so yes, that is definitely a factor this year. Right, any positions that were... And if they're all filled now, that will not happen again next year. That portion will not happen again. That's right. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Motion on Article 9. Uh, <clears throat> let's, I'd like to make a motion to accept um, Article 9 as well. <coughs> Second by Anna. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. Article 10, we did. Um, I, I didn't have you down for 11 because it's still changing the name of a project, so it didn't seem like you needed about that. Our Article 12 is to vote on the expenditure limits. I've also changed the name of the project, assuming the prior article will pass, but technically what this article is is just that column that says expenditure limits, and there are no recommended changes from last year or many years. So it's as has been presented for years. I think it was a year ago uh, that the library fines and fees fund bill was renamed. Uh, Amy has mentioned that was very helpful. So Bob, these are expenditure limits, so if there was right. a need to spend more than that. You'd have to go to town meeting to and town. get this changed for that year, either temporarily or permanently. Okay. But, and, and the one that's the, the largest in the kitty is the inspections for all in the fund. Yeah, and I don't remember the number, but in the area of 175000 I think, is in the budget, proposed budget, so it leaves a little wiggle room. Should we need it, but not a lot. It's small, but the town forest piece, I think, yeah. touched on it briefly last week. Any plans there? Have you heard anything? Um, they keep saying they're going to start culling the forest. Yeah. Um, they are, they're supposed to be, they met with conservation, I think, conservation committee to discuss it. Um, they're talking about it okay. a lot. I don't know if that's the plan. I haven't gone to a meeting in a couple months. Ago. You have? Okay. Um, but no, yeah. um, so I don't know of a definite plan of what they have. They don't even have a clue necessarily of the amount it's going to cost. Yeah. You know, so and that's going to be difficult because it has to go out to get under a 3039, and it's kind of a nice thing, but it does. So yeah. So the past concept, which is now many years ago, 
was um, they would sell timber for more than it cost to cut down. That's what and I thought. Put the money in here. Yeah. And it's not clear anymore if they sell the timber that you're going to be costing money instead of having extra money. So. Yeah. Right, it may cost them money. Because that was a revenue stream. It shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So there's, uh, yeah, it depends. <laughs> at least you say there's no balance in that advisory. I never use it. Uh, the one question about yeah. the acting inspections fund. Since there's only really 25,000 open, if there was some need to do something, whether yeah. it's you know, the additional activity related to inspections. Is 25 enough room, or would we be better off pumping it slightly? That's a really good question. Um, you know, one of the issues with the projects going, um, you know, not so much the four and 6,000 ones as the traffic one, where we suddenly needed 50. It's really hard to answer that. There'd be no harm in increasing it to 250, let's say. Um, you know, Gene and I have talked about that. And, it's really hard to know what you'll need, but you have some sense that we don't know its name, we're going to need something. Yeah, it feels like 25000 isn't going to be enough. And, and generally speaking, our practice so far has been if it's a 40B project, uh, they pay. If it's a 40R, we help. We're trying to encourage 40R. That was the whole point. Um, we get some state funds for 40R, so that was, that's been the theory so far, and that's why um, you, know, you might see more on the 40 R's, although there's none planned immediately. So yeah, I, I'd find no harm in the 250 or some other number. But I, I can't give you a name of how it's done. Yeah, but, and, yeah and how just, much warning do you well, have? Just, just to be, just to be to clear, just right? so you understand, because I didn't understand this till the last few months. As you can see in that spending authority column, the town manager can go spend whatever that difference is without asking anyone. So if a need for 25,000 comes along, and if, if I'm right in remembering it's 175, I didn't know that I could just do that, but town council said, yeah, any of these spending authorities do that routine. It's like, oh, okay. So if you do want to increase it, I mean, I would go through a public process of some sort. I'd tell someone I wouldn't just do it. Um, it would either be CPDC or ZBA, oh, yeah, it count. select board, yeah, no, tell my dog. Um, but just so it's clear, it doesn't have to go back through town meeting. To spend up to this. Correct. Right. Yeah, and to go more than that, it absolutely has to go to town. Meeting. Right. So if we ended up meeting, if we left it at 200 and you ended up meeting a total of 225, we either would have to wait till the next town meeting. Correct. Or ask or, you or call. Yeah, or take it on. Okay, got it from Oh, okay. it might have been coming. Yeah, it, it's, it's really hard to know, but, but obviously, as you know, it's busy. And so the odds of us not needing something are probably pretty low. Yeah. I would be inclined to increase it. I don't know how do others feel. I don't feel opposed to that, but to me it's a timing yeah. issue. Do you think we usually don't have enough warning to hit one of the town meetings? What do you think? I think it's hard to know. Yeah, I mean, right now, the only projects that haven't started yet are um, 24 Gould Street and the Eaton Lake Big 40B that we just, the zoning board just approved a couple of weeks ago. All the other projects are either near completion, well underway, or they've started construction. We've got no complaints, knock on wood, no complaints from any other construction projects. If one, I think Bob said he had one on 467 Main no Street go. about parking. Yeah. It got solved immediately, <coughs> and we never heard another complaint. So, yeah, the the, um, the question you ask, it's probably more of an urgent <coughs> thing that suddenly came up that wasn't anticipated that the neighbors or residents want solved. Mm -hmm. If it was a longer term project planning thing, we kind of got that nailed already. Yeah. So it could be. It could be fast. Yeah. I mean, I think 200 would be plenty if we're using 175 grand oh, yeah. already. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, and I want us, this has a high balance. Yes. So I want yeah. us to be and, and using more money's coming that. in from, all, from these projects. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I for sure want us to be using it to increase in that expenditure. Does that then? Yes. Yeah, there'll be hundreds of thousands being added to these to this fund over the next one or two years. 
there's no, no problem in that. Either. So that courage is spending kind of that, then let's increase it to 15. Advice. Uh, no. agree. Uh, don't disagree. Uh, so we should uh, make a motion to accept Article 12, but change the inspection revolving fund expenditure limit from 200,000 up to 250,000. Second. That was a motion. That was second. a second. Further discussion? Call? No, no. sorry. Too early. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anticipation? Yeah. 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 To, to 250,000. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, all those in favor? None opposed? Seven, zero. Article 13 is the annual housing allocation plan. Again, I, I mentioned this is select board subcommittee potentially going to change this going forward, but for now this is required to be done annually. And there's no action and no uh, proposed action in this fund. Although um, one of the developers, artist is making, a, I think it's a $35,000 annual payment for a couple of years into it, so balance used to be a little lower than 300000 That was agreed to several years ago. Great. It on 13. Right? Make a motion to accept. Article 13 is right. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? None opposed? 7 0. Let's see. Article uh, Technology Backup. 14 is. Um, <coughs> I think, as I've mentioned in the past, when we were talking about the rubbish contract, our state law is three years. You need permission of your uh, legislative body to go beyond that, which is town meeting here. Um, many services are priced in the market to be expensive through three years and cheaper after that, because otherwise you need permission. We normally don't ask, but in this case, uh, years four, five, and six are significantly cheaper than the first three years for this particular request. Um, as I indicated, I'm not sure what the source of funds is. Both sides get 100000 annually for technology that could be the source. Um, the building security project could be the source, although I don't think it would be the source. Um, but this is just to allow the permission in advance of us knowing exactly when we're going to do it or what we're going to do it. But we know we will do it in the next year and a half, two years maximum for sure. And this is to allow um, both the town and the schools, which back up each other, to accept the additional technology that's already there, but that's also coming in from the building security project. So, quick question on um, yeah, from reading that paragraph, it says it's not explicitly budgeted, and you said there's a hundred thousand. There's 100,000 in the capital plan, um, both for school and town, 100 each, right. technology. The, one, uh, the town site identified as server and phone upgrade? Yeah. yeah, so we would have to change that if we did. Okay. And it could be in year two. So we have to vote this for each specific project? Yes. Oh. We yeah. can't do it at a, on a higher level. It seems yeah. a little you silly. You think there might be a bylaw you could... Say we could always do more than three years. You could ask Ray or yeah. Allison. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that, but I think they want it's to. It does seem a little funny, sure. Yeah. Because I think people will get it. You yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Well, look at the best deal, and if it's a five-year deal, we should do it. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to accept Article 14. Second. Further discussion. All those in favor. Opposed, so is your See, Article 15 is Turf 2. We have a few folks in the room that know quite a lot about that project, and none of them are me. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have any questions. I, I think we've talked that the main points are it's not expanding the field, it is lighting the field, um, and really that's you know, the preferred course of the school committee, and, and I, I think it's a good course. And then flexibility built in for follow on lighting. Um, uh, yeah, and honestly, I didn't know that till tonight. So. Um, 
you know, we, we did reduce. Bonus. Yeah, that's, it's, that's always good surprises. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we reduced it by 250000 because of the lack of field extension, which, in honest, honestly, once we get into it, would have been more. You just never know. We built in a contingency. You just never know until you build it. So, um, you know, hopefully 2.25 million has enough contingency. Do we build in like 15 percent on this one? We did. Okay. And based on what we're seeing, we're comfortable with that. Okay. Enough. Right, because I would think we see we have a lot of data points, right, of other districts doing this. Where we part of the funding we received this year was to do an actual design of it, so they're pricing it out as part of that based upon the specifics of our field. What we've seen preliminarily is the funding will be appropriate. Yeah, that's a really good point. As, as FinCom kind of agreed a few years back, maybe even longer, it's much better to approve some money up front in order to get a better number rather than just do some number and then hope that you did it right. So, yeah, that's, that's a good point. What was the sport that the, the extension would have accommodated? Girls Sports? Across. Okay. Girls lacrosse. And that's what they didn't do at park during the day or uh, or at the, 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 the stadium. stadium. Okay. Um, it does say that um, are you planning to borrow for this or is yes. this gonna, you are planning to borrow? Yes. Are you, do, does, is, will this get lumped with another? Um, oh, uh, that's a good when question. When you go out to the market. Um, Almost for sure, yes, but not absolutely for sure. If there's nothing else that we need money for as soon as this, and that's possible, we'll probably do a short-term borrowing and then do a more permanent one when, like, the building security or the water comes along. Because the water tank is, is large, the building security is large, but I don't think there's imminent cash flow needs as quick as there is for this one. So eventually we'll... Do a permanent borrowing for this one. It could be a temporary one, which we don't do that on. What's the time frame on those? It's such a small number compared to. The I'm just trying to get my head around, like yeah, versus like a building, like a school or something. Um, if if town meeting approves it, let's just pretend, just a round number. May first, you have full. Um, you're going to start right on June first. On turf two. Yeah. Yeah. We like are when are you going to start spending money? We still have to go out to do bid and all of that information. We currently have, we'll be giving an update. So oh, that's right. We're giving an update to school committee on March 28th, so we will be going through the various options and timelines that we have as part of the update based on the information we're receiving. But there are different timelines for when we could potentially start, depending on yeah. And that will depend on when Turf 2 comes offline. So we just received um, this past week the revised timeline from the consultant. So we're going with that no now. But we, we have not sent out the, the request for bids and proposals yet. So that is one process that needs to happen before we can start. And the plan and the very high likelihood is the field is off then for the fall. Yes, that is what we have told um, athletics, recreation, and any outside groups that use it, that it will be offline most likely through November. And there's provision in the budget you wrote tonight to handle that financially. Perhaps temporary lighting or transportation yes. is needed. Yeah. I'm just surprised. The project takes that long. Huh? Yeah. It also depends upon, based upon the timing, it gets a little bit tricky because it also depends on when the people are available to do the work. So there are windows of opportunity where they're already booking through the gotcha. summer. So it's sort yeah. of windows of availability on the construction. That makes sense. At least if that's fine, we should, we should borrow when we need it, not before, nor after. It actually rules how you have to spend it within a certain amount of time in your body. So. And um, how, I imagine this field will last a while, like what kind of debt would you look for? This is, we don't do I trust Bob. <laughs> no, it's just well, because of What kind of debt we look for and how long it'll last might not be that related. <laughs> um, when we put it in the original turf fields, weren't we told 20 years? That's kind of what sticks in my mind. I think it was more like 10 to 15 years. Well, now it's clearly more like 10. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure that it was marketed as 20. Maybe that was embellished. 
Um, I'm just looking to see what I thought. Did you see the five or ten year borrowing? It really kind of partly depends what else we're doing, what else we're borrowing for. Uh, ten years. Which is a little on the long end. We'll see what the market's like. That's, that's what we're planning. Mr. Corbin. I'm just curious why we wouldn't use some free cash for this, given that at least the last time I looked at free cash it was above the reserve level that should come and set as a policy part. We wouldn't need it. Really your question, I guess. So we have, as a policy, we've looked, I think at $2 million and above typically should go to debt, but that didn't think about where free cash was. That was just a general policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, free cash is sitting at 10. Cash? Right around that, yeah. It is a, it's 11 now. With stabilization or without? Without. Without, it's 11. And 7 ish is what your policy is. So there's not a 4. Yeah. See, I'd rather look at this. Uh, it's a security. That's my priority, too, is the money for security. And to me, that could be a good use of some cash. of the free cash. Okay. This works well into our plan. I tend to think that where it should stick in. Yeah, just we always talk about free cash being a nice one time kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fairly small amount of number. Yeah. To have make that determination, you'd have to have town meeting would have to approve it one way or the other. Is that right? They'd either have to say it's free cash or it's you could, yeah. for instance, tonight you could say let's let's go along with you know the two and a quarter million. Um, why don't you just borrow one and a quarter million and we're going to have a million of free cash to the final motions. You could do that. It'd be better if you did it tonight in the floor town meeting, but that would be exciting. But yeah, I mean, Jeff's right. You absolutely can do this. It's a question of when do you want to do this. And at least historically, FinCom has done that when there's been a surprise where the cash is needed that maybe wasn't anticipated and, and most likely at November town meeting, not an annual process. But they could do it any time. You're right. So, right on. I understand from previous meetings um, that turf fields require a certain amount of maintenance. Is that budgeted into our current operating budget? It is now. So that it, okay. it hadn't been, but in FY20 it is. There's a piece in DPW for uh, the Parker turf and then a piece in facilities for the school, two school fields. Thank you. They were doing it before with other money, but this guarantee is they can afford it. All right. Do have a motion? Are there any other questions? Do you want to talk through a little bit more the notion of uh, if some free cash should get used, whether for this project or for another? I, th I just, we're going to learn more about security soon, right? Yeah, soon, but not tonight. Right. Um, yeah. Actually, one way to think about this is the budget's been put together to afford to borrow for 10 years for turf two, which really isn't ideal. You'd rather borrow for five years. So another course of action is you could agree to fund the difference that five years would cost out of free cash for five years. So just to make up numbers, maybe it's 125,000 more a year for five years, and then we could borrow for five years instead of 10, and we'd be done. Right, and it would be less than using then half of it less, because of, yeah. Yes, you wouldn't yeah. be spending a million on it or two right. million or whatever. Um, you would modestly reduce the total interest you're paying. Actually, it could be a little more than modest. Um, and that's not a bad, when you do have free cash and you don't have an operating budget crisis, it's not a bad strategy. Um, but if you were to do that, I would ask that you did it tonight so I could prepare the documents properly for a town meeting. Have to change the debt schedule um, and some of the, which is fine, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I want, want to make sure they get the information that you're requesting properly. But knowing what you know about security that we will be hearing more about, that's, that's, that's my really concern, good. that's my number one priority for. Um, Okay. Um, I guess I just want to, you know, you're going to have an April 11th executive session, and you're going to, at Eric's suggestion, defer voting on that tonight. I would wait. That's my honest opinion. Right, so not use any free cash. Yeah. Right. 
part to Joe. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, again, I agree. Waiting is probably the right answer because we can interject cash as needed or if needed at any point in time for anybody. Like, we don't have to label the money toward a project because I think that's a bad idea for a lot of reasons. But, you know, we could, you can just top up whatever project is the last one, so to speak, and, and have the same effect theoretically that you would if you did something tonight. So I don't think there's a need to move. Sure. I, guess, I think that if, if you're going down that road, as, as historically, that's always been a broad discussion about use of free cash and not just that this group, it should involve the board of so, select board. Like at a financial forum. Mm -hmm. At a financial forum and not a decision made here tonight. Just, I think that's precedent, right? So you would have that opportunity in the executive session when four bodies to bring up the boards and you were there. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to just. I hadn't really thought of that component of the night, but it certainly could be discussed. Correct. So, I got a, a motion to accept, to make sure I'm in the place, to accept Article 15 as written. Second. So, Paul, for discussion. All those in favor, <coughs> one opposed, 7 0. We'll skip over to uh, 17 and come back to 16 uh, when we have an executive session. This is the uh, Auburn Street um, water tank, 750,000 gallons, 110 feet high. Um, last we knew, the four and a half million is still a pretty good number. Um, and that'll, again, the cost of all that will be absorbed by the Water Enterprise Fund. And that map's a little hard to read. That's going to be great news. That's a big line item. The fact that we saved ahead of time, we can, that's exactly what we're supposed to do. I think this is a great example. Any questions from the committee? We do have a motion. Motion to approve Article 17 as written. Second. Second for more further discussion. Motion to mark session. <laughs> uh, See you, Kim. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? None opposed. So it's so article 18 is another um, water issue, uh, which would involve debt. It's to uh, <coughs> borrow for uh, improvements on Town and Grove Street. But giving you a little background, is the, the issue was known. Well, the issue was caused, I guess you'd say, when we shifted to the end very, very fully. The water treatment plant used to be down there at the flow of water, the pressures of water had changed quite a bit since we changed the source. Um, we knew about the issue relatively soon, but we didn't need to do anything uh, and waited to North Reading's decision because that would change the flow again. And once they decided <coughs> that we had a clear path to go ahead and make these improvements, so that's why it's scheduled now. Um, would you say it's urgent? Uh, uh, that's urgent. Thank you. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> this water supervisor says it is urgent. Would say it is. And some of the work we do in water mains doesn't get a name on it and doesn't ask for debt. It's just part of the annual stuff, but big ones you have to see because we can't afford a million within the annual budget. Bob, oh, can I ask a question? It's not necessarily specifically on topic for this, but. Is there any backstop from an insurance product or anything for for anything catastrophic? Because we're always sort of planning for these big projects. Yeah. Is there any backstop? Is there an insurance product that, that, that I mean, municipalities can use if a water main explodes? I mean, there's your there's your event. I mean, there's your insurable event, right? So I don't know. Is is that something the town's thought about or looked into? It's an insurance guy in the room and he's probably going to nod when I say insurance, you pay what you they get. They make for. money. <laughs> no, they make money, but sure. I'm saying it doesn't cover wear and tear. But what? But yeah, I didn't know if there's anything, but how about the arsenic? How about environment? That's exactly like what I was arsenic was. Yeah. The, there's, yeah. There are definitely environmental policies that cover that. Yeah. For sure. They would have excluded that. Well, maybe. <laughs> if we, it's been how the policy is, right? I mean, really, now they might exclude it, but back then they might not. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
Um, the I wonder, I wonder if it's something the town should look into. Yeah, you're doing all this planning around all of events. Yeah, I don't know what's out there in the world. Yeah, I mean, we do our a lot of our insurance through Maya. Um, Matt's employees, Jane Miller, knows quite a bit about it. We can certainly ask her. It's not something I've really heard about. Yeah, no, no, and maybe it doesn't exist. I mean, maybe it's just not in There used to be snow and ice insurance, or so amount of mm -hmm. snowfall insurance. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was thinking from the environmental standpoint, you all of a sudden would find something right. when you yeah. talk about the arsenic. I thought, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, that was. You know, and, really and one year lucky. Logan bought it. One, the first year they bought it and they lost money. The second year they bought it and made money and the product stopped. Uh, <laughs> so, one, yeah, one year once. Maybe it was Warren Buffett next. <laughs> yeah. I it's not it's but yeah, I just wonder if it's like sure. it. I mean, just goes. I, I just keep hearing the theme over and over throughout the night. So. Good talk. Any other questions, comments on 18? I can come up here and in my head. Moves to accept Article 18 as written. Second, three. Motion for Mark, second for Paula for the discussion. All those in favor? No opposed? 7 0. Uh, Article 19 is allowing the town to accept Chapter 90 uh, highway roadway money. We did get a, I don't know if it's an estimate or an actual number, it's like 592 or 3,000, so 600,000 was our guess. Um, uh, it hasn't changed except for one year for many, many years. One year it went up to uh, almost 900,000. Uh, and occasionally, I think twice, we've gotten uh, supplemental budget money when there's a surplus at the end of the fiscal year from the state. We, we got a few bucks. Um, Reading, I'll, I'll give all of you a lot of credit. Uh, Reading adds to this funding <coughs> roughly 400000 a year through the capital plan. Many communities add nothing. Um, on the other hand, Reading is a cut through, and we kind of have no choice. So that's the other side of that. Um, you're paid uh, state aid based on your highway mileage, but not your location. Well, there is a location factor, but honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, so again, this is just to allow us to accept. And if we're not sure of the amount, we just change the motion and say accept whatever the state gives us. I'll make a motion to accept Article 19 as well. Approve Second. Sorry, can Mark and see. Uh, for the discussion. Are we going to see South Main Street repaid? Scheduled. It's up to bid, isn't it? Have you heard? Bid hasn't been awarded. It's not been awarded. No. It's up to bid, though. It's a state project. It's it's yeah. Right. Yeah, that was a big money project, too. Big bottle of trails. Big bowl. Is it $5 million? Like <laughs> six million. Mm -hmm. And we're not putting in any upgrades. Right? Sure. Sometimes we do. It was more than just saving. They were doing some work on sidewalks and uh, crosswalks. Uh, for the discussion, not appearing. Uh, all those in favor? Not opposed. Seven zero. The budget. Because we're not doing twenty one twenty two. Okay, that's be on it. the other page. If you have a one page or the two sides, and if you don't, that happens. We see here. Two sides. So, and, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so line B99 is benefits. Uh, I have a couple of corrections to make on capital and debt. But benefits is as good as it's stated. And, and actually, my corrections go backwards. Not um, you know, you can see the write-up. Health insurance has been very, very successful. Uh, we are in the middle of negotiations, so I, I can't say much. We did get a renewal rate. I can't say it out loud. It's very good. It's two years in a row of exceptionally good renewal rates. Um, we, we are negotiating plan design changes. I don't know when they'll take effect. Um, certainly, there's no urgency from a price standpoint to do it right away. But the Sorry, what do you mean when you say renewal rates? Um, Maya in Mar early March or maybe late February actually gives each community a renewal rate, a percent change. Oh, okay. And so I knew that, I can't okay. remember, sometime in mid February. But then I have to negotiate with the unions and they may wish to change the terms in some way that costs us more or less than just the renewal rate. I see. Uh, but the renewal rate is good, and whatever comes out of the negotiations will be easily affordable within the budget that's in front of us. Yeah. Um, my only uncertainty is, is as we mentioned, 
I haven't seen a full run rate of all the employees we've hired. We still have some that are just rolling in the door from academies, for instance. Um, but within the next three months, I'll know. Uh, and I'm still very comfortable that the number in front of you for health insurance is, is fine. But really, the driving cost in uh, benefits this year was just the annual retirement allocation, as, as you can see. You know, 5.3% until we hit the uh, funding level. Uh, I think it's almost 10 years from now. Right, so from a logistics perspective, I think here's where we'll we'll uh, take the motions on going around the table. The way we did it was, yeah, for example, Mark would start okay. with the motion, follow the second, next time we'll okay. follow do the motion, Karen would second, and so on, work our way around. What we didn't we talk about the capital plan when we when we go to C99. Is that the yeah yeah okay. yeah we're gonna have a discussion on, on each one as we go okay. right uh, and we need to assign people too which we didn't do um, for the well for the articles you do there yeah you, won't you don't really for the yeah. line no that's right that's right that's right that's right yeah. okay all right so motion to accept line b99 in the amount of eighteen million one hundred thirty nine thousand fifty dollars second so further discussion on the benefits line up. all those in favor I'm going to oppose 7-0. Uh, I'm going to discuss C-99 and D-99 together on uh, debt and capital. capital and debt. Do you want it before the motion? Um, yeah, I'll just describe C and D. Yeah. Uh, the numbers are as was presented to you previously for FY20, but there were some corrections Eric noticed for FY19. Um, the FY19 debt service number should have been reduced by, I forgot, 170 odd thousand. It's a really odd number. So it doesn't have any impact on FY20, but the percentage increase for capital, I'm sorry, for debt service is 17%, not 13%. The um, denominator, if you will, for FY19 going down means that instead of a four tenths of a percent decrease in shared costs, it's really three tenths of a percent increase. So again, the numbers for FY20 are fine, but the baseline for FY19 in this example was off. So it basically affects the, the percentages. So it affects the percentages. Um, further, on page 15, um, there was a different error historically on FY19 of 200,000, which again just changes the percentage change, not the actual amount. And then a headline on page 17 just didn't get updated. So again, the scorecard was right, all the numbers are right, but the headline of the section not have a correct number. It should have been 7.8 million, which is throughout the document, it said 7.4. So I just want to point all that out. Um, what you're voting again on these line items is spending money. Um, you've seen a capital plan for FY20. You've seen all the elements of it. You've seen the debt schedule for FY10, FY20, uh, and all the elements of it, and that's what you're approving in these lines. more discussion than you would. Um, well, last week we talked about whether this is an appropriate time to relook at the um, the roads, our internal, the percentage of roads that we're spending on. Is this the right time to? Um, probably the right time is to have DPW really look at the, when's the last time you ran that program? Have you done it recently? Yeah, it's called the yeah. Pavement, 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 pavement Index. Yeah. Maybe I'll sit down with you if you want to go over that and, you know, for an extra X number of dollars, what would we get? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably something we'd rather come, come to the board, select board with information on, make a presentation. There's something called a pavement management index where my recollection is 80 is pretty good, 90 doesn't exist in New England, and 60 is where I live on County Road. Uh, that's a, that's a hint, by the way. Well, no, so, but like all of us that go around the room, right? Yeah. I'm not feeling like we're at 80%, but maybe, well, I don't, are we? Uh, no. Oh, sorry. okay. Thank you. Yeah, that, I don't know. <laughs> like, I thought you were saying we're at 80%. I'm like, but well. They have a pretty robust program that can tell you not necessarily where to pay necessarily, but by spending this much more, this is how you'll change the aggregate number. I think obviously the devil's in the details. So I can't tell you if you want to add more money and, and let's just pretend you want to add free cash to do it. I can't even begin to tell you what the right amount is. Okay. 
any amount you'd, you'd add is obviously going to help the road condition. Uh, in my observation, uh, again from County Road, if you didn't hear that, <laughs> in uh, there's been a lot of the warming, <laughs> warming and freezing this year. There's a lot of potholes. So, no, a lot of traffic. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're cut through. You hit it right on the yeah, major cut through state. Yeah. Between Lothrop and Lothrop. Is <laughs> 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 I didn't use the C click fix yet, but. Uh, <laughs> So I think that's a pretty good idea for a presentation of the board. Because again, now we're kind of in a better position after an override to think about these kinds of things. Like we can spend a little more money that we never had on something like that. Right, some of it's a balancing act depending on what state projects are going on. Right. West Street took it's a lot on the community in terms of inconvenience. So Main Street's going to be the same. Exactly. We have to balance it with that too. People don't want to give up the convenience yeah. of having more traffic because you're working around construction. Yeah, and, and DPW, I am National Grid to a lesser extent, are doing a lot of projects. So you technically want to pave after what you know is done. Right. But it's still a good. It's a really good time to think about it. So one question here is that uh, building security uh, does have an occasion of about $560,000 in 2020. Is that right? Yeah. I'm so com I'm comfortable in you approving that because I know we could spend it. Oh, there's no issue we could leave it. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, since we're holding off on, is it Article 16? It is. Should we? Yeah. It would it contingent? Yeah. Would, mm -hmm. Should we make it contingent on that discussion so that we we'll cover everything else? Yeah, it's really up to you. Because if there was some reason why that weren't to be the number or wasn't to happen, yeah. um, that opens up a lot of space in the capital plan. But do we have candidates? I mean, don't, I mean, we don't have to spend it. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, you, can, you can either, the article on the issue itself is very sensible to delay because you're going to see a presentation. Honestly, it's 50-50 what you do here, and there's not a wrong answer. Um, you could wait, and you could just carefully write up the background for Tom Winnie to explain it, because whatever you do tonight is going to be in print. Whatever you do later is not going to be in print, so we have to explain to town meeting your actions or lack of actions. I don't have a problem either way you want to go. So the flip side could be to approve it in here, and then if for some reason there's a change that takes place, then come right. to town meeting with that, or have a vote before town meeting with a change. Correct. So either way, there's a vote before town meeting with a change. Right. Only if there's a change. change. Yeah, right. I tend right. to. Yeah. So it might be cleaner if we don't do it. Do it. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was the? I I my tendency is to think that we wait, but I I couldn't quite gather what the consensus was otherwise to do it now. I think the, the discussion was that if there's going to be a change, we, we would do that prior to town meeting, that the vote prior to town meeting, that we would have to take. If we didn't, if we didn't wait now until after April 11th. Uh, so either way, that probably, if it moves forward and it's in here, then we don't have to do anything. If it doesn't move forward and it's in here, we have to have another meeting. And then the flip side would be that if we take it out and then it moves forward on April 11th, we still have to have another meeting to put it in. Okay. So, so the easiest thing is to just to leave it in, in I think we'll it in. or we got to take some Presumably on April 11th, you are going to vote. Do go out into open session and do whatever you need to do. So you're going to have the same amount of meetings either way. But from the perspective of health, if we if we do a contingent now, then we would have to explain that to, yes. to the town right. meeting where I think it's yes. to do it now because the last just to go. Sort of hedging the bet there. If you yeah. if you prove the, the number as requested, certainly you can add a sentence or two just explaining. Remember, go back to look at Article sixteen where you know that discussion is not yet finished and this number change. I don't know if that helps or makes it less clear, but you you can add whatever comments you want. Just avoiding any map, you know. <laughs> <laughs> which, which committee is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Wait a lot, yeah. But it could it may require additional explanation at town meeting. If if we diverge, if we end up diverging, it's going to require some additional yeah. explanation. 
Yeah, and you do have a budget that's balanced revenue to expenses. So if you suddenly reduced mm -hmm. expenses, you'd need to do even more explaining. Mm -hmm. Okay. My sense is to try to avoid, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Where do we leave off? Here. Um, except line item C99 capital in the amount of 2599500 Second. Further discussion? I was hoping that um, looking at some of the, the major projects in the out years, we could... Um, just hear a sense of what the next step is towards those and it may be none I think effectively the DPW building is right now there's not a next step plan but um, to the extent there is anything in the works I was just hoping here for um, for the DPW building um, the senior slash community center and kill them what is the general understanding of what the next step would be and when um, as of, I don't know, two, three, four weeks ago, when, when I wrote what I wrote, that's all I knew, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be an update at school committee, as, as Gail mentioned, when I kill them, or elementary school space, so I don't want to go near there. Uh, no, okay. There'll be a capital, a capital update discussion. on the 28th, but it'll be an update on the elementary plan. Okay. We don't have... On the school there is no study. No time. On the space study, there is actually no, right now, we don't have a kill them project because we're in the middle of the elementary planning study. Yeah. Master plan. Study. So it's, it's effectively the next step there to see what comes of the, the, the elementary space study. Yes. yes. The, um, the, the next step, which I think I wrote up for the, um, the senior community center, is to have someone form a group and take over. And um, we asked the council on aging, and they were interested in participating but not leading it. So it's like they were, 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 not, they were interested were not. in participating but not leading it. Okay. Um, so it could be select board. I don't know. I the answer. But that would be the next step. Like a first meadow committee. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The field, not school. Right, 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 right. Right. And then um, DPW, the next step is tomorrow morning after breakfast with the guy who makes it. Okay. <laughs> do you want to do that? A vote? Or do oh, have some motion? We have a little motion on capital. Sorry. Any, any other discussion on C99? All those in favor? None opposed. 7 0. Now D99. Oh, me, sorry. Yep. Okay, so we're all right. Sorry. Yes. Make a motion to accept um, line D ninety nine in the amount of five million two hundred forty eight thousand four hundred fourteen. Second. <laughs> uh, Bob, on page nineteen, there is a row called premiums. Ten thousand five twenty-five. Just cover that. Oh boy. Yeah, you better, you better do it. <laughs> so what happens is when we have a premium, we have to spread the premium out over the length of the debt so that we're not, you know, raising on the recap. Um, it's just the amount of the whole amount we're doing it net of the premium. So each year you'll see an amount for that premium that is being reduced from your excluded debt so that we raise the debt and principal for excluded debt net of the premium that actually was established when we actually sold that debt. So the premium is a favorable <coughs> we obtained when we went out and got the debt? Mm -hmm. Kind of below face value, if you will, mm -hmm. and that how it's viewed? Or above. Or above. And we're not allowed to take right. all at once, so we have to amortize it over the length of the debt itself. And so each year we get a piece of it to the benefit of the residents. Yeah, so it's at 10525 so is that like 10 years worth? So it's like $100,000 that we're in the time? Well, we have five years left, I think. Okay. So it's just good. But each year, <coughs> as the debt was 
Got it. Okay. Thank you. You ready? Motion to approve line 99, the amount of 452,000. I'm sorry. We didn't vote. We didn't vote. I'm sorry. We got a motion <laughs> on the table. <laughs> I don't know. It is. Oh, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> Quick, all those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, was that a yep, yep. Uh, not opposed seven zero. Now E ninety nine. All right. Motion to approve like E ninety nine in the amount of four hundred and fifty two thousand four hundred dollars. Second. Further discussion. All those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, I move to approve line F ninety nine in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars. Second. Oh, sorry, that was you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Further discussion. All those in favor? Not opposed. Seven zero. All right, so we are into the wages and expenses on the town side now. Mm -hmm. I think, Dan, it's around to you to make the motion. We can have any discussion. Fifteen ninety one. Yes. Yeah. Make a motion to accept the line G ninety one in the amount of one million four hundred seventy two thousand three hundred dollars. Second. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I revoke myself. <laughs> I'll second. Any, any, any discussion on this? I guess we'll put you on I guess. That's, that was the confusion. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Make a motion to accept line G92 administrative services expenses in the amount of one million five hundred twelve thousand seven hundred. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Zero. Move to accept line H91 public service wages in the amount of one million five hundred thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? 7 0. Make a motion to accept line item H92 public services expenses in the amount of 355750 Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. I'll make a motion to accept one item I-91 finance wages in the amount of $759,625. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Motion to approve line I-92 in the amount of $158,050. Second. <laughs> this is the hard part. Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, I move to approve line J91 public safety wages in the amount of $11,217,400. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Move to accept. J92 public safety expenses in the amount of $522,750. A second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Move to accept line K91 public works, public works wages in the amount of $2,725,275. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Move to accept line T92 Public Works expenses in the amount of $857,425. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 
seven zero. Motion to accept line item K93, public works, snow and ice, in the amount of $675,000. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 zero. Motion to approve um, one item K94, public works, street lights, in the amount of $164,800. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 zero. Motion to approve line K95 in the amount of one million six hundred ninety-three thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, move to approve line item L91 library wages in the amount of one million three hundred ninety thousand five hundred seventy-five. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Seven zero. Move to accept line L ninety two library expenses in the amount of three hundred seventy thousand nine hundred dollars. Second. Any discussion. All those in favor. Seven zero. Move to accept uh, line M ninety one core facilities in the amount of three million one hundred seventeen thousand four hundred forty five dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor. Seven zero. Move to accept line M92 town buildings in the amount of three hundred thirty-four thousand eight hundred dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Seven zero. Move to approve line item U99 school department in the amount of forty-six million seven hundred sixty-seven thousand three hundred forty-eight. Second. I might. You know, maybe if we're going to say the same thing. Mark. Just to, to clarify, so this um, reflects the school committee approved budget with an addition of $300,000 that um, came from the accommodated cost side health and is rolled into this U99 budget line. So the, the voted school committee budget is actually 46, 467, 348, mm -hmm. and this has the 300000 adjustment. I, I just wanted to add, uh, as the school committee could add, I, I know they were asked, or I was asked, um, how come they haven't re-voted a budget? Um, they can't. Uh, they can do it after town meeting is done uh, in order to say what they're going to do. They can be asked how it's going to be spent, but they cannot legally vote a budget because it's already voted in, in a balanced budget. They can't unbalance it. I can. They can. So just to clarify. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? None opposed, seven zero. Okay, we'll to approve a line item W ninety nine water enterprise fund in the amount of six million six hundred thirty-five thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Seven zero. We would approve line X ninety nine in the amount of seven million seventy four thousand five hundred and seventy five dollars. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Zero. Move to approve line Y ninety nine stormwater enterprise fund in the amount of four hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred dollars. Second. Discussion. <coughs> All those in favor? None opposed. Seven zero. And then um, somewhere between now and the floor town meeting, there'll be a line Z ninety nine for the cable TV. Okay. And then you're running out of the alphabet. Yeah. Yes, we are. Double A. All right. Well, that's you're done with the warrant. Thank you. The rest are action pending. Sign reports. Yeah, we need to assign reports. I think we have uh, some minister for as well. Okay. So quick question, please. The um, so the the total budget will actually go up by the amount of the cable TV. It's it's right. yes on that page it does your technical voter total, but yes. Right. But actually, that's sold. not true. Uh, the original motion for the budget does include the very total. It does not include state assessments. But everything else that town meeting code is in the introductory line and the concluding line. So you're right. Yeah, that's the 
it's going to be tricky to discuss the sort of thing the first year. Yeah. That's great. Any other questions, comments from anybody? All right, let's uh, let's go through and assign to the uh, to the articles. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You're all welcome to stay. Guys, <laughs> No joke. I, I can really get you for a You know any kind of I actually got a crossbox. No, no, no. I we for a big but I work for a paper company. And we have four who go in and cut people's properties right. like smaller than our forest all the time. So I just don't know how far they travel. But I think they travel if I get to it, it and batch up X amount of software with X amount of hard load. If I can get some somebody who went in there, and they're not charging, they're paying us 35 in North Red. So I just don't know how far they travel. Like they're, they're generally the main, but if I do it right around Portland, so it's only an hour away. I don't know. We've got a good section. Definitely section. I can imagine that. Yeah. So, I will, I will. You know, if you have that report, I'll call you more. If I have that report, I can give it to my force. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Cable company. Uh, Sappy. I was in printing for 30 years, so you were. Sorry, I was a I was in the printing company. Oh, you were. Where? Okay. Oh, where did you work? I worked at uh, ZBR. They were in Wilmington for okay. many years. They became Global Solutions. Yeah. Eventually went out of business. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. A couple other orders of business. We just need to assign. Uh, so this is where we stand up kind of give the FinCom status report for all these articles. So we just need to assign everybody to do that. we work through from top to bottom. The first one would be Article 4, Amend the Capital Improvement Program. We could go around the room to make it easy. Okay. Yeah. Mark, we can take it Oh, disposal of surplus. And <laughs> you want to, do you want to stake your claim to that one? That's pretty much my claim. I like that one. I think that whoever does that one should have to read each read, one. Read, read. Yeah. yeah. The Grizzly Man, 950. All right. Paula number five. Paula number five. And number seven. No, he doesn't. <laughs> so, <sorry. laughs> we're going to put, put Ann with Ann, you have number seven. Uh, sure. And then we'll swim back and Don't give. Don't forget to mention that exercise equipment was actually donated. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone objects, let me know. But Karen, number eight. Okay, thanks. Mark uh, with a C, number nine. Let's give one to Sean. Yeah, good call. That would be. Uh, Cable fund, perfect. Yeah. yeah, Sean, you got the cable fund. You're still watching. <laughs> Dan, phone to beat. Dan, I didn't mean to take that out of your hands. Did Chris you really want that one? Now. Okay, so Whatever Dan, 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 number your eleven. Favorites. I'll take number twelve. Back around some more. Go to K for thirteen. Lucky thirteen. Um, Paula, number fourteen. I don't know if you want us to fall in the thing or he's on. I, yeah, I think we would do that, yeah. Um, where do we have a 14, so then Karen, 15. Turn of two. We skipped 16. Um, you could assign something. Yeah, Mark, okay, Mark, no, yeah. Let me do 16. 16. Sure. And 17. Dan, 18. We have Sean, 19, and I'll take the budget. That's just for the whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then they got the last three. You may as well. Yeah. All right, so back around Mark, 21, Paula, 22, Karen, 23. Thank you. Everybody good with that? Yes. All right. I think all we have is minutes. I'm just the one, sir. It was the ones that um, were sent out just a couple of yeah. times recently. So. I have one change, Jackie, on uh, page two. 
um, the first, second, third, fourth new paragraph, especially the next question asked was the status of hiring a new economic development director. Um, the last sentence, um, I would cross out the words, um, if longevity is an issue, and say instead, if the job remains hard to fill. So this was a discussion of mm -hmm. what should we do if we're mm -hmm. having trouble getting candidates. And in discussion, recommend revamping the job description if it remains hard to fill. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Just we need a motion to but it would include that provision, right? Motion to approve minutes as amended. As amended. Thank you. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? None opposed. Seven zero. Um, next meeting is on April 11th. That's where we're in executive session to learn what we are able to learn about the building security. And um, I believe it's 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay. And if you're not familiar, it's, it's sort of effectively a room above the Scatini Library. If you can figure that out. So how do you get there? Um, oh, it's not easy. Okay. I think the elevator goes there. Otherwise, you got to wind around stairs. Maybe I'll try to get something out to you in email. So it's 6 p.m. Uh, it's a distance learning lab, what, what a distance day? learning center. Sure. It's uh, April 11th. Uh, it's a Thursday. Thursday. <coughs> Thursday. And so are we in? Are we um, we're posted to me in open session, or we will be? Um, everyone is posted in open session to adjourn to executive session. Okay. So if you have open session business, you can then go back to open session. And after. Well, any of the boards can do this. Yeah. If you're well, not able to attend, as I am, mm -hmm. um, but I like to get the information mm. because it's interesting okay. can it be how do we do that but is there a really good question there? Um, there is remote participation i'll have to see if there's any rules about executive session because you're the first to ask okay i'll be out of the country i think it's okay so, <laughs> i don't know if you like i to. can try remote i would like to so the last time somebody don't. tried another member of the committee hung up on them. i know <laughs> Listen, I, didn't, I didn't hang up on you <laughs> it's not like you could be in hawaii or So I'm actually uh, not able to attend either, but I'm in country. But I probably could uh, okay. jointly attend for at least a while. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, but for Mark's uh, question, remotely, remotely, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you, I guess there's two questions. Yeah. If remote is not an option, right? Like let's just play out the scenario. And again, I'm going to try to make it work. But let's say it doesn't. Is there a way to pass information? provided in executive session. We will, well, staff will want to talk about that because, I mean, normally I'd be happy to meet with any of you and, and mm -hmm. fill you in, but I'm not going to have all the information. Yeah. Um, there will be a presentation by a consultant that night. My guess is the consultant's not going to give me the presentation to have. Sure. For security reasons. So okay. it's, it's a tricky question. Yeah, so that so may we'll not be possible. That. And that's, that's what they not possible. Yeah, at a minimum, I'm happy to meet yeah. with any of you and discuss what I, my perspective. Yeah, that's fine too, yeah. to be honest with you. Okay. I just want to get a little flavor for what's sure. happening if I can't be there yeah. in person. Yeah, you bet. And everybody else at this point, do you believe you're able to attend? Yes. So we'll have a quorum. And we will need to vote on Article 16 and probably 21, 22, and 23. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so the select board is having an executive session at 6 o'clock on March 26th to do the real estate bill. Right. Um, when is that? I'm sorry. March 26th. That's a Tuesday. Exactly. Yes. Oh, exactly. It really wouldn't be appropriate for you to join them, honestly, in that section. But any time after that, in other words, April 11th, um, I will have to ask town council how to proceed. Do you need an executive session to vote on these articles on land acquisition, or whether once they dispose of it, March 26th, it becomes public? I don't know. I kind of think it becomes public. Uh, but in order for you to vote on the land articles, you're going to have to do it the 11th, presumably, unless you want another meeting. Right. Uh, and the only question is, do you do that in open or executive session? I think it's open. But the only, the only <coughs> other way to get information on those articles is that night. I can, I can. It, it's really a question of is the material still executive session or not? So yeah. Again, yeah. I'll have to answer that with council's advice. I think once the select board concludes their business that night, assuming they do, there's always a chance they don't, but if they do, I believe that makes all the information public at our discretion. 
land so that you could be brought in. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. Because you have the three land articles that have nothing to do with the 11th other than that's a convenient thing for you to vote and meet. And then the building security, which is that night. Right. I think are those the only ones that you defer? Yeah. Other than last year's bills, which there aren't any. Right. And you said, Mark, you've limited time that night as well. Yeah, so I, I will I have to teach that night. I will be, um, I have to teach till 7 so I could join a call remotely till. Okay. My, my understanding of the six o'clock meeting is the school committee has a regular meeting at seven that night. You would know. I'm not sure. But that's. I think that's what I remember. It sounds right. So that they wanted only an hour for the building security, just so you know that. So you might miss that part entirely. But if you have other business, you can catch up. So sorry, they wanted the seven o'clock to be for the building security. No, six to seven. six to seven. Okay. Yeah. And so they have to, then they have to that. leave that room and go downstairs and have an open. Okay. If we need yeah. If I can join in remotely, I'd like to. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah, those are interesting questions. Yes. Yeah. So, I have a feeling this could be my last FinCom meeting <gasps> ever because it is in June. Yes, and then we're. Am I out June 30th or June 1st? Don't we typically do June 30th? June 30th. Sorry. Year. Okay. Ignore everything I said. Who would have brought a key? Oh. I'm just kidding. Just don't come to the meeting. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The last person to term out, I think, was David Greenfield, and he he celebrated by abstaining on the last set of minutes. <laughs> he was going to vote oh, against, but he decided not to. Wow. That is funny. That is really funny. He goes eight zero one. And Mr. Brown objected because you're not allowed to stay. Of course. Right. <laughs> Perhaps we'll still make a point for that. So. <laughs> but it's not often that people have gone the full nine years. Chuck and I were close, but didn't um, make it. Takes a hearty soul. I think you're next. Um, I thought it was this year. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Is it next, Is it next, next year? year? Yeah. You, got, you have next year. Technically, all you have to do is take a day off. Just saying. Go back for another nine. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you can only right. have to take it out. It's consecutive. Yeah. Sign back right up. Oh. Consecutive In. years. So. Oh, we really? changed the bylaw, right? So can you get a little I think more I've had a little bit more than that. Yes, you are. You might be the first one. <laughs> yeah, you can go up to, I don't remember, it's like nine and three quarters or something. Uh, higher than nine. Just because it was silly three to, full terms. to lose the last term because you happened to start a little bit early. Did you start a little bit early, Mark? No, I don't I think did. so. I started, um, I took some, did I take someone's? Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I think I took someone's <laughs> it, it, full term, it must be. Okay. Close to full term. Okay. It was like more than six months or whatever. Whatever the, I think whatever the new language is didn't yeah, doesn't cover me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so the, really um, close to nine years. In the a page that I'll add to the budget for you, I've listed the month you started, all of you, and it was in last year's budget, if you want to look. Oh, that's from the town clerk. So I think that helps us keep track of the new rules. I just don't remember. I just remember you were the, both the longest serving. Mm -hmm. But we typically meet in June, yeah? Yes. Okay. So we'll bring a cake back. We'll <laughs> <laughs> see what capacity <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, any other questions, comments? I'd like to um, thank the committee for all their um, all their attention, all their hard work coming to all the school, the school yeah. committee meetings, the uh, the select board meetings where the, the town presented. Uh, it it does help the process along. I know it's a time commitment, um, but but thank you very much to all of you for all your engagement on this. It's important. So. Yeah. If our CTV doesn't do it anymore, it's going to be trouble now. Yeah. Oh, Fair enough. Crazy. Yeah. I watched a lot of them. Yep. I was like, it, I mean, don't think about, you know what I mean? Like the, the effect on that, yeah. on this town government yep. is yeah. gonna, could be huge. Yep. Just, 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 just huge. general know, engagement and participation. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. absolutely. Keep me on. It's hard game work. Sorry, so I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to block. Can I please okay. make a motion? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make a motion to adjourn. Did we, we do the meetings already? Oh, do we never? Yeah, we did we vote the minutes? We voted the minutes. I think so. As there were a couple. Yes, because yeah, I, 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 I did the motion. Yeah. I did the motion yeah. with Bob's help, and yeah. yes. <laughs> 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 okay. you really yeah. want to stick around. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I have a motion. Thank you. Second. All those in favor. Zero. Thank you very much.